stop this family is our fortress. Dad, I know you think I'm crazy. I feel her. I hear her heartbeat. She's so close. So what does her heartbeat sound like? Mighty. You heard it up top. We are, for the first time, taking a trip to Pandora, the mighty moon itself, to talk about the once highest grossing franchise of all time. That's right, Avatar, with the sequel Avatar Way of Water, here on Normies Like Us, with your host, uh, Colin Spider, uh, Monkey Boy Brooks. Oh, man. I, if, if you took Spider, I was going to audible to Mikey Boy, but you Oh. <laughs> oh, I should have so, called dibs on all so of them. I'll just be um, my kitty. Sure. Sure. And this is, uh, I guess, Jake Sully. That's right. Uh, but my I Jake. would also identify most with the character of Spider. So. Uh, you could have been, yeah, Mike, Mike, which, or yeah, whatever his name, Stephen Lang's character is. Yeah, I can't Quaritch. remember. Yeah. Quaritch. Quaritch. Mike Witch. Mike yeah. Witch. The, yeah, the clone of Mike Witch. The Edie Falco general character. What's her name? <laughs> yeah, General Mikey. <laughs> um, big Whale. What's up? Sure. Yeah. Iacon. Uh, yeah. We are here <laughs> on this podcast for the first time. Now, Mike, uh, this podcast has gone on for about 15 years, correct? How, how many episodes have we done here? Yeah, our first episode was Avatar 1. No, <laughs> that's false. It, it but, should have been. Uh, yeah. the, the interesting thing to point out is, Jacob, we have been going on for so long. We have never covered Avatar before, the first film. Uh, but here right. we are. We're going to be talking the new release here, Avatar 2, Avatar The Way of Water, uh, James Cameron's new uh, masterpiece, dot, dot, dot. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but I guess, what is your guys' history? And I, I, I guess it's just worth pointing out. This is a pop culture podcast. We talk about normie stuff, normie things. Again, never talked about Avatar before. Something that uh, people point yeah. out about this franchise. Does it permeate in pop culture? So what, what, what do you guys think about that, too? But, Mike, what, what's your history with Avatar? Okay. Um, so, you know, as a, as a film nerd, film student guy, you know, came out to California to do all that. Uh, obviously, when the first Avatar is coming out, it's it's a big deal. The technology is a big deal, and it's it's very cutting edge. So from that perspective, you know, I was, you know, intrigued to check it out, and I saw it in 3D. That was the whole thing back then, you know. Um, so I checked it out. Kind of, I'm more of looking at its technical merits, and it was technically impressive. I just think it's boring, and I don't like the world of Pandora personally. I just it just doesn't grab me like Mad Max. I don't know. I like that universe more than Pandora. The the graphics are great, but uh, it, it was it was. I kind of had to drag myself in. But we'll talk about it. There's merit wow. to these films. We'll talk though, about it. I, I didn't. I I've, I've never been crazy about it, but I respect the craft. Like it is it's a groundbreaking film, biggest movie of all time. I, I give it credit and, for that. And when you saw it, Mike, you saw it in 3D. I mean, you did the Correct. whole shebang. Okay, cool. Not IMAX, but 3D, big screen. You know, I did I did as sure. much as I could. So. I respect it for what it is and the numbers it generated. It's just not a, it's not a franchise I'm attached to that much. But okay, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Jacob, Jacob. What about you? yeah, tell well, us, tell us how plugged in you are right now. <laughs> listen, I what came on here. I already know how Mike feels about it. I already know how uh, you feel about it, Colin. I think, but I came on this podcast to defend my boy JC James Amazing. Cameron and uh, to make a case for this franchise as. A good franchise and that's what i shall do but as far as my experience uh with the first movie i did see it in theaters back in 2009 and uh i don't think i appreciated it as much then as i did but i recently rewatched it uh basically the night before i saw the new one and that was the first time that i had seen it since theaters so it's been like 13 years and uh i thought it held up pretty well uh, I'm pretty much a big fan of this uh, uh, franchise. Big fan of Pandora, the world. I think uh, I think you guys are crazy. Uh, wow. Pandora is oh, amazing. Uh, and I love the Navi. It. Yeah, you love the Navi. The Navi. Who wow. doesn't, man? Who doesn't? Yeah. And as far as okay, people say, mm -hmm. oh, Avatar it doesn't have any cultural uh, significance mm -hmm. or whatever. But I say to those people, how can that be true when Avatar is the highest grossing? worldwide film of all time 
how can it have no cultural significance? True. Someone's going to see it, obviously, right? Well, and yeah, so. it has a, a theme park, which I assume none of us have gone to. No, I'm, no I mean, hard as I am. I, I did watch an entire YouTube video, uh, Jenny Nichols. Did, oh, did on it. it was. I might do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, um, wow. yes. her breaking it down. But but she's you know, great. Said, and then we'll throw it to Colin with his experience. I just want to touch on you. Oh, biggest, highest grossing movie of all time. Mm-hmm. But then you yeah. yourself admitted. You had not seen it since you saw it in the theaters 13 years ago. So <laughs> oh, no one's rewatching point, it. No one's okay, watching okay. it at home. Nobody Fair can name point. three characters. Nobody I can. I can name five. I can name Jake five characters. I can name five characters. I can name Jake Sully. That's a good point. That's a good point, Mike. But I would counter that by saying, how many times do you rewatch any MCU movie ever? Uh, for me, it's like very rarely. Uh, I think I rewatched Avengers 1. That was probably the last one I rewatched, not having, you know, not out of theaters, but I, I never rewatched those things. Movies. Those are mid too. Right. Yeah, but that's what yeah. we're, that's, you know, that's what we're comparing it against when we say, you know, blockbuster movies, you're comparing it against the MCUs, the DCs, yes. the Fast and the Furious, the Jurassic Worlds, the Transformers, those kind of movies. That's how I think of Avatar, right? those movies in the wild. I've never seen an Avatar lunch pail, but yeah. Colin, I do see an Avatar yeah, drink on enough. your desk. So what's your background? That's right. Yes. We, uh, we're going to forensically in our next segment, I want to go through <laughs> beat by beat our, our viewing, like every like our moment experience. that occurred. <laughs> yes. um, and I'll talk a little bit about my, my e-way uh avatar collectible cinemark glass right here in a yeah. little... i just want to point out that this yes, glass is do. very tree inspired <laughs> while the new movie is very well, much a water yeah, Jacob, movie you say <laughs> that i water. looked on the cover of it i cannot find anything that's specifically way of water and the bottom just says just avatar, avatar. <laughs> So they just had those cups in storage for 13 you, you years. You almost have to wonder, yes. If so those were. did not sell originally, yes. Um, but um, it, we're going to do the film school perspective, it's sounding like. Because mm-hmm. like you guys, same same deal. I was a young film student. Uh, Jacob and I went to college together. Uh, I was in that very pretentious mode. I did not see this in theaters originally. Mm-hmm. I remember taking the stand and being like, this is the death of cinema. It's not where I like one of my favorite filmmakers, James Cameron, going. I, he was a man of practical effects, obviously always pushing computer effects to their limit. This is too far. I don't need to see a quote-unquote animated movie. Um, and then the the Catherine Bigelow stuff, his ex-wife, The Hurt Locker. I was swung more that way, if you remember that sort of Oscar. That was Titan, the narrative yeah. uh, versus each other. Yes. And it was one of the, yeah. the one of the lowest grossing Oscar movies versus the highest grossing because oh, her locker was a good movie, but it was a it was more of an indie hit. Right. It sure. Like and a huge box controversial, episode. of course, because the war and, you know, times it's reflecting society. Not to say yeah. that Avatar is not, of course. Thank but you, um, I did not see this film until much later. I was wrong. I you hear all the hype of how the wave of it went up and it went down the roller coaster that the debate you two just had of does this culturally permeate? Um, I would hear other podcasts where people would start to float the idea of, you know what? I'm going to say it. Avatar is good. And I'd be like, Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. And during quarantine, I watched it for the first time all the way through when it hit Disney plus for the first time, because of course we'll talk about in the history of it, that it is now a Disney property, quote unquote. Um, and I was blown away. I thought it ruled. I, of course, did not then see it in 3D. I do not have a home 3D device of any kind. You don't. Um, <laughs> amazingly, no 3D TV. Uh, and then I watched it again this week to get ready for this new one, and it really did not work. And I wonder what the difference is of being exposed to this world for the first time and the excitement that comes with that versus like, Oh, I've kind of been here. I'm kind of now seeing the strings. And again, the narrative stuff that we talked about. But that's where I was at. And I was excited to go into this. I'm going to accuse you a little bit, Jacob, of maybe a Doughboys style villain rant of where like not to say that you're Hmm. you're pretending to quote unquote like last Jedi to piss me off Mitch and Nick style. But I will say I think you are maybe artificially defending this film in a way where I'm definitely no. not going to tear it apart, but I, I I can't stop thinking about it. And there is a lot that I want to say about this movie that we all saw. Well, so yeah. First of all, yeah. I do like The Last Please. Jedi. Second I love of all, The Last Jedi. <laughs> um 
In you know, I have to defend great. this movie because yes. so yeah. many people I've talked to are like, oh, Avatar is mid, Avatar is boo, yeah. we hate Avatar. So mm -hmm. I have to defend it harder than I would another movie because no one is defending my boy JC. So sure. I'm out here for that. And, uh, you know, I think it does hold up against, and, you know, I'm not saying it holds up against like real movies to me, but, but the, you know, the, the well, blockbuster that scale whoa, that we're, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, is a good movie. this a like Hobbit actual good level? Movie. Yeah. Where you're just sort of like agreeing it's an achievement of cinema or are you enjoying it? I guess is a question. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed okay. it the first time I watched it and I rewatched it. I think it held up. And uh, I think this new one is even better. I think it blows the first Avatar out of the water. Nice. Get it? Water. Uh, nice. And wow. I think I uh, I'm excited to talk about this new one for sure. But I can also yeah. defend Avatar 1 if we want to go down that road. I think there'll wow. be a little bit of overlap, uh, kind of the yes. franchise and stuff with this, again, the film school approach. And did the effects yeah. hold up? There'll be a little bit of comparison. But I'm I trying agree to just yeah. That this is a step up and we'll dive into it when we get to proper review. You know, this is an improvement over the first one. I can at least give you that. And it's not, that's right. Concept. We're not going to trash it. It's not dog shit. I just right. have no. some issues. That's and again, the visuals, I rewatched avatar one, the visuals hold up extremely well. Like it was ahead of its time when it came out in 2009. And I still think the effects today look as good as any MCU or any modern blockbuster the effects are as good, if not better, in Avatar 1. In Avatar 2, it's just a whole nother level in yeah. terms of visual effects. So I say, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, plug into our, our little avatars and hop into the world of Pandora. Well, Spider, you just put on your gas mask and we'll, we'll, get, we'll <laughs> yeah. see you out there, you know? And we'll talk uh, Yeah, Avatar. cuz. Yeah, bro. Bro, you ready, bro, cuz? <laughs> let's go. Way of water. I see you. <laughs> It, and with that, we're back because we do see you, listeners. We are, of course, greeting you uh, and Duke truly Mocto. seeing you. Uh, Jacob is our Truk Mokto. He is the leader of this podcast where we are talking Avatar. We're going to be talking Avatar, Way of the Water. We're going to be talking the history and all that stuff. To get there, let's talk JC real quick. Let's talk James Cameron, the director of this film. Uh, what is it, 1997? What year is Titanic, right? 1998, 1990s. 1998 um he releases a film a a genre filmmaker okay who up until that point had basically made movies about cyborgs and time travel and and goop and piranhas and like little nasty guys the and ocean stuff, right in the ocean because he loves the ocean but aliens and weird stuff the too. abyss mm -hmm. releases a movie jacob that is the ultimate love story of all time and he like marries huge sweeping cinematic effects with a simplistic love story that he yeah. writes i mean that he he marries this incredible one of a kind soundtrack winning grammy you know highest grossing of all time song to right uh, he sweeps the academy awards and he makes all the money in existence and mm -hmm. because of that <laughs> you know it it's it's worth pointing out because of all that he is basically allowed to do whatever he wants. And from that moment in the 1990s, he says, well, I want to do the film that I wanted to do after the first Terminator, which is that movie about the silly blue cat people that I keep pitching you guys. And they're all like, okay. Mm. And he says, and here's the thing. I'm looking at my watch now. It's the 90s. The technology is not going to be ready until the late 2000s. And they're like, okay, what does that mean? And he says, I'm going to need... Money. I'm going to need money, money, money. You're going to give that to me. We're going to invest in it. And I'm going to deliver something to you that I, I can't describe. In your mind right now, you're going to think about this stupid movie called The Polar Express that's coming out that like has people look like, you know, CG mannequins and stuff. Mm -hmm. That is not what I will be doing. It's conceptually what I will be doing but I will be making you cry and making you think that these blue cats are real. And these executives basically go, okay, because again, the building we're standing in was paid for by this thing called Titanic. So we will be giving you the cash for that, but we don't understand it. And right. James Cameron goes goodbye and, and laughs all the way to the bank. And uh, that's how we get the first Avatar makes, film. 
and just hides yeah, out for and, 12 years drawing blue people yeah. for the technology. <laughs> just doing crazy right. doodles. Yeah. Yep, yep. But to go back to, you know, 2009, um, mm. a lot of people thought Avatar was going to be a bust. Like it was going to be a box office bust. Um, so I think it's important to note that like, yeah, there was doubters when Avatar came out. It proved them all wrong. And, uh, you know, Titanic was a very strange uh, success in that it's kind of unique where it's not based on any kind of IP. I mean, it's based on a true story, but it was just a very, you know, it's a historical disaster film. Uh, and if if you guys weren't old enough, uh, normies, when that movie came out, it was like everywhere, right? It was just, it was number one in the box yes. office for months. People were going to see it 10 times. Like yeah. Until Avatar. Right? Yes. Yeah. And so. so James Cameron's only made three movies in, you know, 25 years, but, but the first two were huge, you know, they're one in three on the best, you know, all time highest grossing movies. So yeah, he's gained a lot of uh, leeway in terms of his creative vision, I guess, from the studios. He, he can, uh, ne- what they say, don't bet against them. Right. And he's generated a ton of revenue and what, for whatever reason, you know, and we could talk this as we talk, you know, love it, love it or hate the Pandora franchise. He makes money. And this one seems yes. to be making money as well. So, and there's yes. still the doubters that say, "Oh, this one's going to be a bust." I think it's a at like forty four hundred thirty two million opening weekend right now. I yeah. say that's pretty good. Uh, well, the other thing to consider with that too, because yeah. you know, obviously the first one we played really big overseas. You know, China is still like kind of coming out of lockdown, and there's some COVID surge happening. Russia not getting this yet, or who knows? So, so there's a smaller right. global audience. So the fact that it did four hundred already. It's probably a good sign that it's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah, and the global audience does he does have that going for him because you know, people in China, they come out for this movie way more than MCU movies, more than Star Wars. They don't really like Star Wars in China. Um, but this movie <laughs> does ghosts. well everywhere. They they I like Pandora. So. Um Yeah, they yeah. love Pandora. Important to point out about Big Gem, I guess final fact before we jump into if we just want to say crazy things about Avatar before we go to or Avatar 2, but yeah. Or spoilers, um, is that after all this, and in the meantime, where he is truly actively developing this technology, he's directing live action stuff, he's in an editing bay on Adobe going, okay, one frame rendered, you know, in this, this 16 hours looks great. I'll be back in, you know, a week when the next one's done. Um, in between that, he is doing the environmental stuff that we all know about. He is, of course, shooting his documentaries. He is, of course, exploring the Marianas Trench, going to the yes. deepest fathoms that any human, of and course, Guinness has ever gone. Yeah. He He's is... very passionate about the environment, about climate change, which I think is good. You know, the coral reefs are dying. Um, he is fully dedicating his life to his vegan lifestyle and cause. He asked that all his film shoots be shot this way as well, uh, that his actors go on these diets as well, too. Um, he has been a vegan or a vegetarian since he started making movies. And like right. Jacob said, the dedication to the environmentalism. He's such an environmentalist and naturalist, you know, and he cares about the natural world, but he does not give a shit about his fellow humans who work with or under him on set. As he's been notoriously no, kind of an asshole. He, yeah, he he's, he's a bit of a tyrant, to some known to be as a yes. director, a bit of a tyrant. Um, but, you know, like Kate a Winslet said, she... As it were. Yeah, I want to come back to that director. when we talk way of the water because supposedly yeah. different now. But we'll we'll talk. That that would be great to hear. But yeah, yeah I I'll think he it he's acknowledged it. Uh, I, it's he's acknowledged it in the past and said he's trying to be a better person on set at, to his you know staff and, and employees and that kind of thing. So, but the thing is, he's such a people like him are such a, a perfectionist. perfectionist. Yeah, S- same with Stanley Kubrick that they they see as they're giving it their all. They should expect the same from their crew, which you know, love it or hate it. Like that's certainly a, a directorial style, but it doesn't always work the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got his hands tightly around every kind of piece, especially Pandora. You know, he's very involved in, you know, the music, the editing, the very camera technology, you know, he'll shoot, like he'll like, operate the camera at times. Like he's very, very hands-on yeah. director and he's very he'll knowledgeable spend 13 he's... years on a sequel to of, make sure it's just the... right. Of the first film, he's listed as co-editor, which you you really can't even imagine somebody like George Lucas, who, say, also has pushed technology into these genre extremes, right, or other modern directors. You don't see Michael Bay being able to sit down in an editing bay and truly being like, 
okay, I know how to work with this footage around VFX that's not sort of inserted or, you know, temp tracks, you know, this weird modern style that we have to do. Mm -hmm. It's ironic because his name is Bay and he's not in the editing ones. But uh, so I guess that's <laughs> yeah, a good I think he's a off point. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'll just say this. He's kind That's of a right, dying man. breed of blockbuster auteur where yes. most blockbuster movie these days, they're controlled by the studios. They're, they're, uh, you know, uh, tested to death with, with test audiences and that kind of thing changed around and post a lot. He is a rare person who has all the creative control on his huge blockbuster movie. And I think that's becoming more and more and more rare these days. So I'll just I say agree. that. Yeah. And I think that exactly leads into where I was going to head is, some of the positives of this that I think we can all agree on before we, you know, nitpick it, maybe me and Colin, but the, the positives of this sequel and Avatar as a whole, but specifically Way of the Water, you know, it's a technical expertise on display and the passion and the fact that it is James Cameron's baby. It's an original thing. Love it or hate it, like if it works, but it, it is a thing that an artist, you know, it was his ideation to completion. And you don't That's right. see that. So I can respect And it's that. a franchise now, but the first Avatar is not based on anything. I mean, you could say the plot is based on Pocahontas or Dances with Wolves. One of the most popular Arms complaints Arabia. about Avatar 1 yeah. is that it has yeah, that, last samurai. that basic plot of the Outsider. colonizer coming in, uh, siding with the indigenous people against his own people, the colonizers. Yeah, it's been done before, uh, but never on a fucking fully realized alien world with you know, giant blue cat people and fucking mechs and amazing effects. So never that's where say. the lead actors are not there. They are completely computer generated based on performance, which well, again is just astounding. And you say, I want to push back a little bit about you saying yeah. that this is an animated movie or, you know, he's still using motion capture. So it's yes. still, the actors are doing all the motions. If you ever seen the behind the scenes footage mm -hmm. of how they shoot it, they have, you know, things on their Little face, ears. getting their, their, you know, facial expressions Perfect. at all times. Uh, and then they do the actions. They block out the scenes with the actors. Yeah. Uh, and I would argue that's the same way that, you know, the MCU does things now where they just green screen everything in and post, you know, in an Iron Man movie, anytime it's the suit, it's not. Robert Downey Jr. inside the suit, right? I wish he it comes was. in. He, they do one little camera on his face so he can do the lines, and then he leaves, and they do everything else in post. So, how is that different from what Avatar is doing, really? Or how did what Avatar did inform what the MCU is doing, probably more accurately? Like, how, how much? Yeah. Of trickle, how much of an impact did his techniques have? For a long time, uh, tons of movies were post processed with you know to be three D right. and they weren't supposed to be. And then that his techniques kind of get out and more people. But I would just say it's not completely animated and it's the same as the return of the, um, I call it the mean monkeys, the, uh, planet That's of the right. apes movies. Mean right. monkeys. He should, uh, he should put Andy circus in one of these. Yeah, he should be, yeah. uh, Taruk Makto in the next one. Hey, right. I took over the tribe. It's me. Mm -hmm. He'll be the fire nation. Cause you know, that's uh, gotta happen. The volcano the people. Trilogy. The fire nation. Will <laughs> that's tell. right. Get really thick arms. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, if you want to, I could briefly just counter some of the major arguments against, uh, Avatar one, you know, they say it's, it's like Dances with Wolves. I already covered that. Uh, the white savior, uh, trope, I would say Avatar one subverts the white savior trope because Sam Worthington, Jake Sully in this movie, in the first movie, he basically gets owned the entire movie. Like he loses battles. He tries to fight the colonizers in the end, gets, beat by them basically and only when awa the indigenous deity steps in with the wildlife coming to to their aid that's when the battle turns so he does i would argue that he's Tariq not the Mokto, savior though he does become Tariq Mokto. they're like nobody's done that since my great 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 grandfather and he's like i'll do it but also anyone i think could have done that he yes. had the idea he's to kind of the brain attack it from the top you know he knows yeah. how the predator thinks so he does that it's not because he's he's a colonizer, or maybe it is informed by his he's a marine his marine yeah. background. Yes, yeah. Uh, and then even in the end, I mean, he wasn't going to be the chieftain, but uh, Sute dies. So, you know, but oh, I would argue well that's a basic. Uh, you know, saying it's a white savior movie, I would push back on that just a little bit. It's a I blue think savior. Subverts movie. the yeah, <laughs> and then well, in the end, he throws away his old body, his old identity, his old life to become. A Navi, and the last shot of Avatar One is him opening his eyes as a fully fledged Navi. 
All right. So that's that's Avatar. That's my little rant. Yeah. Yeah. Her. (laughs) I I hear you. I see you. I hear you. Um, I see, I see you. you. But uh, let's let's do weigh the Thanks, water. Bro. Then. So you're yes. okay. No worries, cuz. Um, so I think let's go. Um, Avatar one, right? It's about a human learning to become a Navi. So like, all right, shit. What do we That's do right. now? So in weigh the water, hmm. how? What about Navi learning to become Navi? Right. And now that's yes. the movie. So yeah. sure, it, it, it shifts to the family focusing on the the children mm-hmm. of. Neytiri and Jake Sully, who are more almost background characters now. They're the older. And again, this is what I think James Cameron is doing with his six sequels that he has in mind. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a generational story. So I think at some point, Jake Sully and Neytiri are going to die and the kids are going to take over as the main characters. It's going to take, there's going to be time jumps in the future. This is all my theory, but it's going to become a generational story. So it's not just about Jake Sully. It's about generations of Navi and human relations on this planet, essentially. Sure. Yeah, I mean, but I'm, we I'm, focus on the kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with that, and there is a lot of. Um, I was pleased that it wasn't just the J- Jake Sully show. I, I did not mind that it was the kids, and there's a lot of like sins of the father, or, you know, things about the younger generation, and do the older people listen to the kids, or how do the kids, def- you know, there's something about that intergenerational, you know, relations on top of his. Totally. Um, it's all about shit. It's like they're Greta sometimes. Like why, why yeah. won't adults listen to the kids and vice versa, you know? Right. There's wisdom and each of the sides. kids for the most part has their own kind of character arc. Uh, I like the expanding of the cast. So like you said, yeah, Jake Sully, he's more of a background character. Now he's the father figure. You have Loak, the second son trying to live up to his older Thank brother. You. Who's like, who's you perfect. You don't know. He has a sheet up. Of course name. I do. Of course I, I do. You are cheating. No, Loak. Let's- Pause, um, pause, yeah, pause, yeah, yeah. pause, 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 mm-hmm. pause, pause. Because they're cats. Let's talk Jake Sully real quick. We didn't say it. Sam Worthington is the lead of this franchise. He plays the crippled Marine in the first film, who, of course, gains freedom through his new body, the quote unquote avatar, which mm-hmm. allows him to step into a Navi body. Uh, what is Sam Worthington to you guys? Sam Worthington, a guy who very famously was living in his car before he booked this part, a uh, totally unknown actor who then films it and zoe saldana will sort of talk about the same thing you have four years between shooting this thing and it getting released originally right uh in that time he sort of jumped ship to another james cameron franchise james cameron obviously not affiliated becomes the terminator salvation guy right right. kind of his biggest role and from there nothing else but what what is what is sam worthington to you well (laughs) your beloved jake uh he gets a bad rap as a bad actor like if you ask anyone Oh, what do you think of Sam Worthington? Oh, he's not hes not a good actor. He's like a guy that tried to make it as a leading man and it didn't work. Um, and I, I, I basically agree with that. I don't think he's a great actor, but I think he's fine in Avatar 1. And then in this movie, I think he's actually pretty good as more of the supporting role, the father figure. Like, I think he's nailing it pretty well in this movie. I agree with that, actually. Mike, but yeah. what is Sam Worthington to you up to this point? <laughs> Nothing. Yes. <laughs> Like it's, it's, Correct it's in, answer. he's inoffensive. I have no opinion of him, which is almost the worst thing, you know. Wasn't he in that uh, Rise of the Titans or whatever movie too? Oh yeah, he did do the Clash of the Titan remake. Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a pitch. I want us to cover <laughs> those after we're done with the Star Trek films. But let's. We'll that's the that's amazing. Films. I. I love those films. I forgot he was in those <laughs> until you just said that, Jacob. Here's yeah. who he is to me. My father will point at him sometimes, like when there were trailers for the first Avatar or the first ter- that Terminator film. And he'll go, see that guy there? And I'll say, yeah, that guy. He'll go, you see that guy? And I'll go, yeah, who is that guy? And he'll go, that guy's a bum. That guy sucks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> My dad no. would just zero in on him. Like, I Sam hate this worthless guy. He ton. shouldn't be in movies. He's Sam Worthless LinkedIn. He sucks, <laughs> dude. And he's so, in it, Terminator Salvation. With, yes. That's, that's the one with Christian Bale, yes. right? The yeah, McG not my film, not right. <laughs> not anybody's favorite Terminator movie. No. Yeah, um, but that, yeah, I paused yeah. you to. I wanted to get him out there, but let's go ahead and talk about his mate as well, who does have these kids with him. Zoe Saldana's character, Natiri, who is the, um, uh, what would you say? I you know the she's sort of the princess best. of she's the, the princess tribe. of the tribe. Yes, her it's father a, is again the another trope. Her yeah. mother is the religious spiritual leader. Um, Zoe Saldana had this whole phase basically in the late 2000s to even now where she 
for some reason, she's in all these like sci-fi franchises, right? Guardians of the Galaxy, Star Trek, this. Oh, um, we're going to yeah. talk about her again so much. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I she's love almost got her own typecast yeah. as like yeah. the, for some sci-fi reason, girl. It, she's almost the new Sigourney Weaver in that she's, you know, hmm. in all these sci-fis. But Very I cool. think she mentioned in an interview recently, she kind of felt side, like kind of typecast as this character couldn't break into other kinds of movies that she would like to do so i hope that you know going forward she can get other kinds of roles too i'm mm-hmm. sorry to hear that she would have any kind of backlash i think her performance as Natiri is maybe the performance of the first movie and one of my mm. big complaints of way of water is where's my girl natiri get her front and center yeah she she's really sidetracked in, in this third act though i think yeah. she's probably the best shit in the movie is her and yes. Act three which we'll get there i would argue oh, yeah. the best shit in the movie is the opening reveal of the 3d which we'll talk about but her pregnant belly and you just being like oh fuck we're back in pandora i fucking love this movie oh, that's yeah true. i watched it in two doesn't years. last long though right. yes important to say mike you went and saw this film did not see it in the uh three dimensions it was sold out so sold out yeah i'm interested to hear you know the difference because i don't know if you really appreciate the visuals as much in 2d like this is really a movie i don't think every movie should be in 3d i don't even think every blockbuster should be in 3d but something like this absolutely it's meant to be seen in 3d i think well, I will say while watching it before we get back to the plot, um, there wasn't anything that stood out to me like, oh, watch out for the ping pong ball coming straight to the, ki-. you know, like if there yeah. was 3D, it seems like it would have been integrated because seem- there's nothing that stuck out to me. Like, oh, look at this, this pointless. No, it's not element. gimmicky. Yeah. Which is no, nice. it's so that subtle. Yeah. yeah. Felt pretty seamless. Like, I, I didn't know where they would have put it in. So I want to know about if you how you felt about the high frame rate in certain scenes, like it kind of cuts back and forth from whenever there's like a action or like a, a landscape shot of like the birds flying mm-hmm. and stuff, a lot of times it goes to this high frame rate. And then in scenes where people are just talking to each other, it's just like normal frame rate. Right. Was I that never, distracting to you at all? I never perceived a difference maybe. So I think mm. compared to the Hobbit, this was fine for high frame rate. I think it was a lot more noticeable in 3d maybe because it, yeah, it um, might not be. I didn't it was, it was a little distracting for me. It was almost like, you know, We'll call him. What'd you think? Jacob and I saw us together in the 3D. We did an afternoon matinee. Um, perfect middle seats. You said when you got them, not sold out. Theater packed. I will not say responsive. Not a lot of hooting and hollering or reacting. One great moment of clapping at an arm moment that we'll talk about. But um, that, and I'm hearing, Jacob, that a lot of theaters are actually having issues showing the 3D showings because it's been so long since a 3D movie that I guess theaters just don't know how to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Just fucking bullshit. I thought that was flawless, but I have to agree with you. And I know we spoke about it right afterwards, but the 3D high frame rate where James Cameron, who again, innovator, like a guy who sits down... We talked once, I, I believe, about the Alita issue where people were like, yo, Alita's fucked up. They messed it up. They made the pupils too big. Like her eyes are wrong or whatever. And James mm-hmm. Cameron said, no, no, no. Actually, what you're seeing is, is that the pupils need to be more centerized because blah, blah, blah. And he figured out that like the way people were looking at him was wrong and they redid it to his specs. And everybody was like, oh, actually, this is watchable now. He mm-hmm. has the mind for this stuff. So you cannot... Ang Lee has come out with high frame rate movies like um, what's that one called? Mirror Mirror Man. What, what's the one with Will Smith? The the clone one. Gemini. Man. Oh, Gemini, Gemini Man. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's it's these and of course Hobbit. We we Mike just mentioned as well. Yeah. Where the the cranking up of the projecting of the film to anybody who's not like a big film head, you have to understand is to control the variable speed. Our eyes perceive things at 24 frames per second. We don't know why, but of course we can perceive them at different things as well. And if we do perceive them at different frames per second, it will get rid of motion blur, motion smoothing, which is this whole separate thing that goes on with television sets. But there's an argument of... Should we have motion blur? Should we not have motion blur? There's an artificiality to the look of cinema that when you see a camera whip around in a Quentin Tarantino movie, you instantly in your mind think, oh, the camera's whipping around. Or if you're looking at lens flare in a J.J. Abrams movie, like when we talk about those Star Trek films where you go like, Mm -hmm. oh, this is artificial, opposed to someone like James Cameron, who, again, 
has spent so much money on computers to make you think that these people are running around in a real forest and that they are blue and stuff doesn't want you for a second to think that you are watching a movie. He wants right. you to think that all of it is real. So he wants to eliminate that motion blur. Mm -hmm. Right now, the way he has done that, because Ang Lee does it for the whole movie, the way that that Gemini man is projected, you can't interval. There's not a guy up there running the projector going like, slow it down. You know, like, Oh, we're mm -hmm. going too fast now or something like, no, no, no. The whole movie has to go at 48 frames per second. And when it does, you start to lose your mind because you are like not used to it. You, you just, we're human beings who watch stuff every second of the day. So what you're used to looking at your TV doesn't make sense when it's changed. So James Cameron goes, okay, since I can't control that element, what I will do is take certain scenes and copy and paste the frames so that technically I'm putting double in at those moments where I think you should, and I'm artificially cranking that frame rate up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what I said to Jacob was, it feels like those moments in video games, Mike, where characters are doing what you want them to do, but then they walk into a cut scene and it's like, oh, hey, Dave, how are you? And they have that like smooth transition of like, now I have to do all the prescribed things. Okay, I'm out of it. You have the controls right. again. Move the camera around. It, and you're just like, ah, yeah, you that's a very, yeah. it's a very accurate description to say it does look like video game cutscenes at times. And from my experience, when if, when the movie started and it was going back and forth, it was distracting at first. Once I got into the movie, I started to think about it less and less yeah. and just kind of roll with it. And I think it's he, sort of a, your mileage will vary. Uh, some people don't notice, you know, the difference at all. Some people don't see motion smoothing on their TV. Like my, my siblings, I go to my sister's house and she has motion smoothing on. I freak out about it because I'm ugh. like, it's such a pet peeve of mine, but she doesn't notice it at all. But if you saw a side by side comparison, you would notice it. But a lot of people, unless they see that, they're not going to see it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah and you know, it, yeah, your mileage may vary, but uh, interesting again, techniques being pioneered here and uh, just, you know, even 2D for me, I, I just a visual fidelity, like, the, the whole fucking movie's in water and people getting yeah. wet and there's drops of fucking water on people's skin and it looks crazy good. Like it looks and yeah. of it's like real. reflecting. No, it's, it's wild. It does. And think about incredible. the person who's, who was job was to make sure the loincloth was, uh, covering everything at all times when they're they're Jeez. running okay. around in the jungle and guys stuff. if i was spider now and we're my getting dick into bad balls elements <laughs> in my butthole no that this is a no, good, that's a good if I mean, my dick was out the whole time mike and i was running around i'd be yeah. having a smile on my face too i would love pandora <laughs> so free right but you're, that's you're what's impressive like it's you know once we talk times. about the character of spider um <laughs> to have a human character aside these animated navi that's extremely impressive to me because yes. you can the make Gollum, you know? Yes. Yeah. And you yes. can make it when it's, when it's everything <laughs> is, when everything is animated on the screen, it's not as hard to make it look good. But when you have an, a human actor in the same shot, it's really hard to make it look natural. Right. We've and seen that with pulled out for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the most path. impressive thing about this movie to me. Yeah. With any of these shots. Um, for sure. So full credit, like some of these animals, scene, you know, we, we get long sequences. I think there's some pacing, but it feels like even the, the Disney theme park, they make you call the original movie. Have you seen our documentary? You know, <laughs> and, and parts of this it is a feel like a documentary. Like he wants you to get, yeah, it's a the nature documentary and, nature, and then we're going to yeah, kill an, an alien animal and planet. Feel Look, yeah. the earth is dead <laughs> yeah. as, as Edie Falco just says, point blank. We got to give yeah. up on this thing. We oh, got to get out of here. The themes of this movie 100%. are not subtle. Like, you yeah. can, there's of all the things you can say about James Cameron, he's not subtle in what the Avatar movies are about. E Edie uh, Falcon should say, I have been to the lowest point of the earth, the Marianas Trench, and this is what I think. <laughs> We've yet to say yeah. the word unobtainium. Never forget. Well, well unobtainium, not we an change important our part mind. of this movie. Yeah. We, yeah. We, no, the first decided, movie was a, not a very blunt name of a rare resource. That's you can't, but I, that it. never bothered me because in universe, the humans named it unobtainium, and that seems like something a human company would do to me. So that, <laughs> that never bothered like me. Dumb vibrator writer named James Cameron, would call <laughs> no, like Elon Musk, would call it unobtainium. Like that, guess, does, that yeah, doesn't yeah, think, yeah, dumb yeah, ass yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we got but, a new thing here. But anyway, so the first movie was we need this mineral that's worth millions of dollars or whatever. Now it's yeah. like, oh, we're trying to move to Pandora. Like the Earth is dying. Humans go. need to get out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to literally colonize Pandora 
And there's also a new MacGuffin, which is like whale brain juice that makes whale you stop vape aging. juice. Yeah. <laughs> which I got to ask, it, they come back to Pandora. It's kind of a big thing in the opening. Like, oh, shoot, they're, they're back, right? The sky people. Um, and at what point did they discover the whale brain juice? Did they know about it and that's why they came back? Or did they just start yeah. fucking around with whales that's and then they question. discovered it? Well, we see they have whole whale hunting teams right. with boats and stuff yeah so why would you do that if you didn't already well they're know? studying all parts of pandora's wildlife they could have another team you know on it. yeah 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 Yeah, we don't know how much science has gone on over the Site years B. yeah it yeah. takes five years but we're not supposed to believe i think that was the first you know colony sent I, I think since then it's just been endless endless and yes so we get this great opening line of we sent the sky people packing even mm -hmm. though we kept some of the smart sciencey people around, I don't know why they wouldn't. Jake Sully wouldn't then think and go like, and let's get all the other ones going. If there are these other factions of whalers and stuff, it's like, no, no, no. Right. Everybody needs to go. Well, it's like they yeah. sent them packing once, but you can't keep the humans yes. out forever. They're just going to come no. back with more weapons and stuff. They can land know? on any side of the planet. Like it's it's yeah. like it, it's mm -hmm. not limited to our little tree village, which the souls no. kind of have to learn the lesson of that, right? And yeah. we get a bunch of world building in this movie to open up the world of Pandora with new biomes, new tribes, and we see the difference even between the tribes of the Navi. So we know not I all Navi this. looks like the woods Navi. We've got this. Yeah. I mean, it just makes the sequel so worth it. The whole time I'm looking at their Popeye arms, Jacob, their little flippers, when he, they're saying you like, you don't have tail. the tail like us. Oh, that's my, right. Yeah. I like, would like the he, tail he scenes. cracked it. I, I loved it. They've got their <laughs> own culture, their own sea culture. And I kind of see them, obviously they're more based on the, the Maori people, whereas the, right. The woods Navi were more like the indigenous people of America. Now we have the Maori. They even do the uh, the Hakka at one point, kind of Which, with the uh, yeah that's a little on the nose for me, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, James yeah. Cameron not subtle. Well, right? and it's yeah. it's why earlier when you're like, I'm not going to do an impression of like the voices of the, these characters or anything. I get <laughs> nervous mm -hmm. to truly in my 30 year old brain of being like. There's a lot of the Navi characters whose names I'm not going to say just because I'm like, I'm not positive what they are and I'm not positive they're going to stick. And yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, do you – I'm very proud of James Cameron for being of this generation where it seems like all those guys were like, find your franchise. And like it took him a while. He found his Star Wars and he's like, here's what it is. This is what I love. I'm go going for it. Mm -hmm. But the difference is where it's like – all the Star Wars appropriation of culturing just feels so – it feels lesser. It is all wrong. It is all wrong. I want everybody to know mm -hmm. that. It is all wrong. But it feels like the misjudgments of an idiot named George Lucas who's like – and then in Phantom Menace, these guys will kind of sound like Chinese takeout delivery guys, but right. or you they're have Watto, not the actually – Anti-Semitic yeah. uh, trope. But Jacob – but yeah. Watto's not actually anti-Semitic. The James Cameron equivalent, right. unfortunately, is like, I'm going to take all indigenous cultures. And you're like, well, what are they going to be like? And he's like, well, they're going to be indigenous cultures. And you're like, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes me feel weird. And then and if you get into the, the casting of some of the, you know, some of the casting, they do cast, you know, Cliff Curtis is the tribal yes. leader of the uh, yes. sea people. He's a... Maori West actor, duty in the last one, CC yeah. H Pounder. But like, then you there's, have there's Kate great. Winslet as his wife. Where you're like, like, what's uh, going on here? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what are you even trying to say here? The way that she's talking, the voice that she's doing when she's saying that's my soul sister and stuff. I am truly going like, ooh, I don't understand why this has to be Kate Winslet. I don't understand what this right. is, and I don't like it. Yeah, so. yeah. There's, a, there's a little bit of this is Pandora. A.K.A. Yeah. James Cameron's version of, quote, indigenous peoples that we can learn. From. It's like he's regurgitating his kind of interpretation of a thing. Yeah. And, it, and you can, can kind of get away with uh, it, to say it charitably. Well, you don't have to be you don't have to stick to the actual history of indigenous people on Earth because it's a whole up it's a different species. They're and aliens with like, the metaphor to do. Yeah. Like an alien. Planet. Yeah. Now we can do Star Trek does parable with this alien species. We can put an Earth based thing on an alien culture and then we can kind of have a dialogue. So so it's it's kind of doing that. Um, right. Exactly. The Haka just kind of threw me off. Like literally. It's, yeah, it that just, wasn't my favorite it, part. Yes. Yeah. It just makes you go like, I don't know that they have to have the Maori tattoos. 
I don't know that they have to do the haka. <laughs> I understand that you're literally going like, but this is me honoring them. And I think it's what Jacob said or, or said to me after the showing where you said like, I think James Cameron is a white guy who tries really, really hard and constantly steps in bear traps. <laughs> that's I, exactly I it. Think um, that's if right. you, yes. Even his James recent comments. Open, uh, <laughs> yes. He is to a certain degree. And I think that's, again, the subversion of the, the white savior trope. Because I think James Cameron, he, he is... want to do good at the end of the day. Yeah, he's a really planet. rich, old white guy. But if you compare him to 99% of rich, old white guys, I think he's coming from a... His heart's in the right place compared to a lot of people yes. in his tax bracket uh to you know yeah so yes. he's doing his best he puts his foot in his mouth a lot with certain comments but he's doing his best yeah and let me just say i, I think this movie it, it kind of i cracked the code in my head at least i like to think i did because the first movie is very you know it's anti-military it's anti-colonialism it's anti like resource industrialization you know, depletion, industrialization this one's of yeah. course like we got to be protecting the oceans no whaling um and there's a spectacle in this magical world around it. I think these, and they're very blunt. It's very clear. Whaling bad, right? So I yeah. think these are movies for stupid babies with a really high they are. budget. So like for children yeah. to watch it and be like, no, oh, you're whaling is bad. Right. Perfect. Uh, yeah. yeah, but for me as an, an adult who's like, man, this plot's a little meh. That's where I get off. Like kind of. Well, I would, I would say, I, yeah, go ahead. But it's well, fine I just that the message that... reaches people, like especially yes. young people. Yeah. But I think, and I'm curious if you were just about to say something to this effect, Jacob, but Mike, I think he would say, yeah, because Star Wars is stupid. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> I would say, yes, too. it's movies for <laughs> normies is what it is. It's, yeah. for new, it's movies for people that their favorite like movies us. are Transformers, Fast yes. and the Furious, Jurassic World. Like, that's the kind of movies I'm I'm comparing Avatar yo, to. Yo, mm -hmm. we got to clean up those oceans. Did you see that thing, man? Like, whoa, spiders, yeah. right, yeah, bro? You want like gasoline? Like... We got to get you electric, bro. <laughs> so it really so is. The I'm the it's first Tesla too. transport. <laughs> the three musketeers. Is... Is a three I wish yeah. we would have found that bit in those episodes, Mike. That's yeah, great. Right. It's fine. Anyway, electric. I'm mad here. that it's a gas guzzler. Mark <laughs> Wong. <laughs> but really, that's what I think is. Yeah. That's why it is so unsubtle, because it is for, yes. like, anyone. It's super accessible to anyone. Your mom could watch this movie. And understand what's going on, even though she knows nothing about Pandora or anything going into it. But what? But what do moms think about high frame rates and 3D and stuff like that? That is they just even a tool notice. for That's him, Jacob. That's he just, just wants him. you to put the helmet on and just get sucked into the world. That's the point of that. I think, yeah. Oh, so if you God. compare him to, like, you know, Scorsese would say, well, no, you know, cinema is an art form in itself with the 24 frames a second coming from film obviously film is the way that we used emotion. to shoot things yeah james cameron would say fuck cinema this is a an experience right i want you my to believe eye. that you're at you're in pandora <laughs> yes. right as Must opposed to watching my movie. brain yes in an ideal world we it would be plug into this avatar and you are in pandora like a supreme vr yeah. one yeah one thing like that's what that's what avatar watch. 6 is going to be when we're all living in virtual reality it's just going to be a virtual reality environment in right do you think he's metaverse. seen westworld and he's like god anthony hopkins totally gets me <laughs> he's like that's that's what it should be and you're like oh yeah. no you're getting the wrong message well i think there is something to you know he's gone to the bottom of the ocean he studies this shit you know there's something to which experience begets empathy right you go to another yeah. country and all of a sudden you kind of get it a little more than you did just reading right we go learn yeah. about animals, right? And he wants to give you that on a fake right. planet to make you think about your own planet. And so it has. Yeah, merit. it's a, yeah. again, it's for very normy, basic people yes. that are like, who never thought about, oh, wait, climate change is happening. That's bad. Like a lot of people, they're just trying to live their lives. They don't think about these existential threats to humanity. But if you see this movie, then you're like, oh, I get it. I get the, the plight of the indigenous people. I get, you know, why colonial, you know, colonialism is bad. Like it makes people think. Yeah, it's very unsubtle because it's that's its whole point, right? Harvesting of animals and like for a blockbuster movie to be doing that straight yeah. up, like and loudly with a megaphone, like a lot of studios would filter some of that stuff out, you know? Let's right. go exactly where Mike just said with empathy. I want to throw back to what I said before about talking about James Cameron as a person on these sets. Now, we alluded to Big Asshole, uh, very famously on the Alien set that was a London crew. 
he revolted against them. He hated that they had different union rules and stuff that Mm -hmm. they were basically protected and couldn't do what he wanted every second of the day. He's a guy who on his set has a rule that is if you cannot communicate what you need to within like under 20 words, don't bother fucking saying it. Okay. You need to say Mm -hmm. it honest. You need to say it direct. And that applies to his whole life and his whole home. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this thing, the novel coronavirus occurred, which uh, stopped mm-hmm. all of life and existence for uh, three years. <laughs> right. And uh, if you were outside of New Zealand, that is because, of course, New Zealand was one of those incredible countries, a pure lockdown. A lot of people could shoot films there. This film was shot there. Uh, of course, when the crew was not working, they were making X for Ty West, uh, a fact that mm-hmm. I just absolutely love. The, oh, <laughs> the wow, same that's incredible. Crew. And Weta Digital, yeah. obviously, behind And Weta Texas, Digital, yes. And we love them. That's why it's reverse um, column. Amazing, reverse column. Truly. Uh, so all that is occurring, and he basically uproots his whole life because this is, again, not a short process. I mean, the kid who plays Spider started shooting this when he's 13. He is 19 years old now. It is six years. He, he moved to New yeah. Zealand prior to doing all this. And, and Edie Falco and stuff. Edie Falco said she shot her scenes like four years ago and Sick. thought the movie had already come out and like was just bad so people didn't talk about it (laughs) avatar too no 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 what are you talking about i they gotta be on six now they're like no 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 easy (laughs) um so you 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 have james cameron making these big choices in his life and these big commitments of course that is going to drive everyone in his life crazy he's an older man who i believe is on marriage eight or nine uh and of course has many kids but we have more avatars or more marriages (laughs) Let's see. I, I'm rooting for marriages, Mike. I'm I'm not <laughs> open to give any more of these. Yeah. Um, oh, we are. We'll see. Uh, mm. The kids implemented his onset policy of, "Hey, cut the bullshit, man. We got to talk to you. You're spending too much time trying to make these fucking Avatar movies. You're not being a good dad. You suck. You are out of our life." Damn. And uh, it drove him crazy as a perfectionist. That instead he devoted all of his energy to. I need to perfect being a dad. And I think the energy of this film is kids are important. And I think that's kind of a lesson, speaking of basic yeah. bitch, that like James Cameron just learned and yeah, like family. wants the rest of us to know. But that's this movie, right, Jacob? Well, yeah. Like you're saying, Connie, he's... saving the world maybe isn't it. Family's important <laughs> yeah. too. But yeah. this is his life's work. You know, like you yes. said, he's 70 or whatever. He's not making any other movies for the rest of his life other than Avatar sequels. Like, who knows how many there will be made by the time he, he dies. But this is what he's doing with the rest of his life. So he's dedicated his, his life to the Avatar franchise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Doug, I'm credit. He it's... has mentioned, like, I need to start training wow. an apprentice to make Avatar movies and nothing else because I'm the only one who could make them. And I need to begin Please. training a, a somebody. That's like, a who R. wants R. to be the head of doing? Twitter? It's like, yeah. no, no one. It's like, please don't pick me for that job. Don't right. bind me to the Avatar No franchise. matter how much money you throw at me in whale juice, you yeah. inject it in I my I don't veins. deserve this. <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah, again, this movie is about family. It's about yes. the kids having to live up to their, parent, their parental... Yes. And- you know, living people... with the sins of the previous generation. What Jake yes. Sully wrought, they're dealing with the effects yes. of, you know, that's right with the previous generation, much like the environmental disasters. So should we they deal with? Yeah. Should we talk about each of the kids and kind of what their deal is in, within the movie? <laughs> I would love yeah. if you did. We're talking generationally. You said, Jacob, you, you see these going on and on that maybe even one day you could see Jake and Natiri not being the lead characters, these, these totally. kids going on. Did you have any hint of that before this, or just you're saying post this movie, you, you feel that it's way, more this post this generational. Movie. Okay. I mm-hmm. knew it was going to, I knew the kids were going to feature heavily in this from yes. the trailers and the promotional material and everything. Um, but I really think James Cameron wants to tell like a generational epic. So it's not just about Jake Sully and Natiri. It's about the larger picture. And I think we have the roots of that with this spider Quaritch relationship, which I think is going to come into play in the third movie. Uh, uh, and like you meant, well, we'll get to it in the third act with Natiri uh, and all that stuff. Like, I think that's going to be a big oh part God. of the next movie. Yeah. All right. So this is hour one of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that's right. to go. Two more hit, hours. Hit, hit pause now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's James talk about Cameron the kids. Said, we have um, plug in. 
the three yeah. hour this one joke and then we'll go with the kids um someone Please. said hey what's a good time to go to the restroom when you watch this movie and he's like anytime you want because if you miss a scene you'll just catch it the next time you watch the movie that's right <laughs> like, that's you'll just come back that's, that's such so a baller right, thing to say <laughs> and you know I he haven't makes stopped point. thinking about it look so i've weird. said before that that <laughs> there's too many long movies like movies shouldn't be so yes. long and i do think this is a little long but at the same time little James cameron pointed out people are willing to sit people are willing to binge a series and they'll watch five one-hour episodes of a series in one sitting but they can't sit through a three-hour movie i i am I am usually not in a theater when I'm watching three episodes of Daredevil That's true. in a row. I can, I there right. is usually I have autonomy a little bit to get up and use the restroom but, when those credits hit. Yeah, you know me. I've said you know yes. don't like long movies. Long movies don't need to be so long. But my whole stance is that if the <laughs> Mike, movie Mike, feels Mike, Mike, deserving Mike, Mike. of its length, hold yeah. on, pause, Mike. If you had to guess when Jacob got up to use the bathroom for this movie, <laughs> what scene would you guess that he does it at? Oh <laughs> boy. I, if I had, I to think guess, I missed something. Big. Spo- spoilers for this movie, yeah. our listeners. <laughs> what, point, see it. What, what do I think Jacob's constitution is generally? Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to have to get up twice. You know what? This I movie, think I. I oh no, that's too late. Is it the brother? I'll tell you. Dog it was during a major character. When Mateo <laughs> oh, yeah. says, "Yes, I think I've been hit." And yep. then he lays down. I was like, wow, this is really happening. You stood up and left. I was like, no, not now, Jacob. Like, that's I always choose. Mind. Okay. I don't know if I've told this story <laughs> the story on the podcast. Aunt May. Wow. When, yeah. When we oh, went to yeah. see No Way Home, <laughs> oh, I missed man. the Aunt May death. For some reason, I'm always missing Incredible. a major character. Death. I made it through Return what a of the choice. King without getting up. And I made it through this without getting up. Um, wow. But let me just point out you remember the alien story, Alien S, right? Yes. I like to think. James Cameron said, check it out. It's Avatar, but it's way <laughs> of water. And when people leave the wow. theater, wow. <laughs> okay. Is what they're gonna say. That yeah. is for our YouTube uh viewers. Like we that is incredible. That <laughs> Jesus. That's yeah. Yeah. But Jacob, well, I did walk us out to this children after you tell us this bit. Yeah. Yeah, I always seem to walk out during a major character death. Bad somehow. luck, man. I thought I, I had some I downtime. Was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. And then the I came back. Act and, has and... no downtime. And he was gone. I, yeah, yeah, there's it, no good time quick. to walk out. No, and I put it no, together no. via context clues. Yes. But that, of course, is uh, Nateum, the <laughs> oldest son. Yes. Uh, memory, that one I did recall. have to look up. But from I memory, I, I do know Loak. I know Kiri. I know Took, the Wait, youngest I, child. It's not Kitty. I swear. I was like, they named it's this person Kitty. Kitty. I thought no, they named K-I-R-I, it K I R I, but the way they pronounce it, it's like Kitty. I, I think no, Katie Spider Katie. is sometimes saying Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think that they have footage to like cut around it. So no, he's like, damn like, it. You did so, just name a cat person Kitty. Yeah. yeah so Jake Sully and Natiri, they have or they have um several biological children. The first being uh Nateum, the oldest mm-hmm. child who This is this is the opening shot of the movie is yeah, Jake Sully explaining exactly <laughs> what Jacob is about to say. Well, first, I like how they deal with the uh, oh, everyone's talking in English, but it's really Navi where he says like, oh, it took me a while to learn the Navi language. But now it's just sounds just like English to me. And then the rest of the movie, they're Teo all speaking Owatsu English, but we understand. Kawa, hand me my water, <laughs> Jacob. And you're yeah. like, yeah. oh, yeah, <laughs> which is a good way to think to handle that. Yes, um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Nateam, the oldest warrior. son. We have Loak, the second son, who's kind of the rebellious, trying to live up to both his dad and his older brother, who's kind of like the favorite child, like he does everything right. Loak mm-hmm. does everything wrong in his dad's eyes. Uh, and because of that, he's very rebellious. Then we have Kiri, who is the daughter of Grace the Miracle daughter Sigourney, of Sigourney Weaver, Weaver's avatar. Avatar. Who we don't know who the father is. Could of be course, immaculate conception. My theory no idea. that is, I think that probably oh. everyone you know who sees that will kind of understand. She, it, she's the daughter of uh, Awa, right? She is the Jesus of Pandora. Will you explain what happened to Grace in the first film, Jacob? Yeah, Grace uh, gets shot as her human body gets shot. She's dying. They're trying to save her. They take her to the Tree of Souls. They're going to try to put her in because basically you can transfer her consciousness over to her avatar body permanently, which is what Jake Sully does. Um, 
but it's too late and she dies and her avatar. Well, I guess her avatar is in this movie in a, like a tank. So who knows if it's, I guess it's still alive. So um, you said 70 year old James Cameron. We have 70 year old Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver, Weaver playing 12 year old Kiri, Kiri, who is, yes. as you just said, the they cut to a tank, the floating avatar body of grace. They have preserved in this fluid. And they say, Jake Soley says, we never figured this one out. It had a baby. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, wow. That is yes. the, basically the third opening line of this movie. <laughs> it's and again, a maybe lot to be like Awa, six characters that are, we all. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of world movie. building to kind of yes. all put on you at once. And here movie. you go. Here's but, what uh, you've missed. It's me, Jake Soley. The, mm-hmm. My theory kind of is that Awa, because she couldn't save Grace's consciousness, mm-hmm. instead made the Avatar pregnant, giving birth to a new Grace who is in, has this connection with the the pa- planet of Pandora, even more so than normal uh, Navi, uh, where she can kind of talk to She's like Awa some type of through water bender or something. She's, she's <laughs> yeah, Avatar. By the end, she's the Avatar. Um, she's got the angel um, wings. She's the, you know connecting to Flora in a way it seems like other Navi just do not. Yeah. yeah, visions. And she's going to be kind of the new, I think, the new spiritual leader. The Moat CC Pound CCH Pounder in the first one mm-hmm. uh, is like the spiritual leader, and they can kind of talk to Awa and communicate with Awa. Um, so obviously, the youngest Ki- child too, right? Yes. So they have. Tuck, the youngest child who's just there basically to look cute and well, hold on, constantly. no, no, no. Yeah. Every character basically goes, Tuck, no matter what she does. That's the yes. importance of a little she sister. She's very cute. Character. Um, but yeah, Kiri, again, played by Sigourney Weaver. What do we think about this? Yeah, Mike, what did you think of this old woman playing a 12-year-old performance? To right? be fair, I didn't realize until the end credits and I was like, huh. I barely really? watched it. I don't even wow. think I watched an entire trailer of this. Really, sure. I, I had to get. You myself couldn't tell in the by theater. like her voice. Well, they pitched it up a little bit or something. I yeah. couldn't yeah. tell immediately. It was noticeable okay. to me, but I, again, mm-hmm. I knew that she was going to be playing that character, so maybe that colors it a little bit. But now I would maybe pick up on it. But I think she did good. I like the character. I mean, I think the performances yeah. are not the problem with this movie. But I think Sigourney Weaver playing like her daughter, kind of an interesting idea. Like I'm fine with it. Very. It's a very out there idea, and I think it kind of works. Mm-hmm. I want to harp on what Mike just said. I think it's very important. No performance is a problem in this movie for me. There yeah. are there. In no, fact, it's good. Yeah. But to what <laughs> Jacob just said, the first film is notoriously anchored by a not great so performance. Right. But in this, I'm watching a blue guy with the <laughs> thickest dreads I've ever seen. And I'm like, this is totally fine. And then, Jacob, you also said as we were leaving, everything that should be problematic in that movie works, including... Well, Spider, which is a little white kid with dreads running around. And yes. I'm like, Spider's great. Sp- <laughs> well, again, this is another. Face, so that's an yeah, important thing. It's another on the nose decision, but it's a very weird decision by James Cameron. We're going to have a human character who is a white guy with dreadlocks, uh, who is basically raised by the Navi. He was left when the sky people left because you can't take babies in cryopods. No. Everyone knows that. Uh, so he was raised on the planet of Pandora and truly wants to be a navi yes uh, but he is a human but he tries so hard to be a navi which again we're going to get into the dramatic irony of his father relationship so we find out wow. his father his biological father is steven lang <gasps> warich the villain in the first but, movie but jacob how is he back certainly <laughs> five arrows to the chest kills you in the avatar yes. universe right well his human body did die but we find out that before the last mission in the first movie, James Cameron, they, <laughs> they put this is where it gets dicey. They make avatar copies of all these Marines just in case they die. And then they're going to bring back their consciousness in these avatar bodies. So we get avatar Stephen Lang in this movie. And I think it's fucking awesome. Dude, I love Frankenstein's this character. monster. Mike just said, this is where it gets dicey. Complete opposite. Jacob, I'm with you. This is where I'm like, Ooh, feed me daddy james yeah. this is the they good stuff villain, nom, 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 nom. the one dimensional mm-hmm. villain of the first movie yes and twisted it and made him an interesting character and gave him and, an arc with his son that's like and, so and his, son, his son he knows he's knows he's not the original article there's interesting yes stuff it's there. the human well the whole dramatic irony of it is that he is a 
former is a marine a human marine that hates the navi and especially above all things hates jake sully mm -hmm. but he's Where now stuck in an avatar body so he's stuck in a navi body and then his son a biological human who desperately wants to be a navi so I just think there's a lot of dramatic irony in that relationship. No, right? no I just think the, uh, but you didn't know that before he died, we uploaded his brain. And if yeah. we're looking for immortality, that certainly Stretch. sounds a lot like it. <laughs> just put yourself in these big We can already bodies. do it. Yeah, you what's can, the all, issue? Why do you need yeah. the whale juice? Come on. Well, you need that but whale juice. But it is juice, a foil though. to the potential, the consciousness being linked with the, the all tree or whatever. And then the falseness of digital memory implant into an avatar. It's like, yeah, right. version of the the spiritual yes. version. So we have yeah. these Marines stuck in these Recombat. avatar bodies that are mm -hmm. wearing like Oakley sunglasses and stuff, which is hilarious. Now, if uh, you bro. were the bald guy, Jacob, <laughs> and they brought you back still bald, but you had the ponytail that plugs right. you into the tree, would you be fucking pissed? Like, grow me some hair. <laughs> yeah. Where do the tattoos come from? They're getting tattooed as avatars. They're, yeah, Why they're not? doing it as they pop out. I they know. designed all they're these like, clothes because yeah. you know human clothes yeah. don't fit Navi, <laughs> right. so they had to design yeah. all these military gear the, for Navi bodies. There, you get right. the idea that truly Giovanni Rabisi was like, get the three D printer to make the T shirts, the Oakleys, like Jacob just said, like, yeah. like make it exactly how these assholes want to dress so that they're comfortable and they just get to work. And, and they, they're a perversion I love, of the Navi, right? Yeah, like, I love this feeling that they're just like these fucking like, like we got it in the first one that Jake was this quote unquote jarhead that was the first dream walker, right? The first military person, one of these fake bodies. Mm -hmm, but right. then you watch that whole movie and you're like, yeah, send an army of these guys with guns to go kill the fucking yeah. savage, quote well, unquote. In the first ones. one, like, yep. what's the difference? In the first one, they're like, we got these mechs. These mechs can go up against these Navi. Now they've got Trust me. different open mechs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now my head is exposed and, yeah. and my whole body and everything. But yeah. trust That's me. That's a metaphor. Like, I'm very susceptible to mankind, arrows. Yeah. You know? yeah. And yeah. you can't breathe here and, you know, everything's difficult. But we could put you out in a cat body that has no issues and does breathe the air. <laughs> Did we mention they're 10 feet tall and have super strength? We can make an infinite like, number well, of them. You put me out there. But, but it takes it's very expensive, they say in the movie, to make yes. the Avatar bodies. It takes right. a long time to make yeah, them. Sixty million dollars. It took you the whole six years or whatever to grow and to get yeah. it shipped That's out the there. The whole too. reason why it's Jake Sully, because it was his yes. brother who's a scientist who died, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The and, and the whole reason yeah. that it's Stephen Lang, because we know you'll make an incredible soldier. You've gone up this before, blah, blah, blah. Now yep. it sets him on this course, let alone if this is like the primary text, because I think really the text is just him and the spider stuff. Jacob, it's supposed to be this like dad and blah, blah, blah. But it basically makes him Jake solely from the first film. He goes through the eye opening moment with the doctors. He uh, rides a, a banshee, right? And, and hooks up and the does the, the challenge. He learns the yeah. language. He goes to the villages. Literally he's going through the same arc as Jake solely, but, you get these James Cameron blow your mind moments where a giant cat is holding up his dead skull Incredible. and looking at it. And you just that like the hardest shit like, I've ever seen crushing his own like, human skull. But, but <laughs> the bone so, dust was animated sublimely, by the way. <laughs> Stephen Lang, a goofball. Let's just say before the first Avatar movies, most known for um manhunter jacob where right. he plays a greasy weirdo character actor yeah. and for um uh tombstone where he plays a greasy weirdo character actor right a cowboy and like all these bit parts and he always disappears he's a chicago theater guy who like likes to do voices and like to do this stuff the transformation to make him Bad colonel Marine. hurts like yeah. like yeah the like the most badass person possible. And then the James Cameron security to be like, well, that worked. Now let me tap into you as an actor and write you like the most soulful complex. Like, can you imagine if a Marvel villain started out with like the villain holding his own dead skull and looking at it horrified, I love that. crushing yeah. it. And then like also having to understand that he doesn't have a son, but does and those complicated right. feelings. You just he's like, got this some is memories. Amazing. The memories of Quaritch, but he's not the human Quaritch. He's a different individual. So he kind of has to come to terms with that. But he's also holding on to his old grudges with Jake but Sully. He's, but he's, uh, and Natiri especially, because he yeah. knows from she his death him. moment. Finds Jacob, he has this obsession of when they find his body, his original body, he says, 
check the log. Does it does it have any files like any any drives? He essentially watches the last recorded memory death. of yeah. his real self, and you can almost feel him being like. And again, it's so subtle because it's the battle he has of the whole movie of if he's real or not. But from like that moment on, he's like, I am the real one because I just know everything that the real Stephen Lang knew and I'm going to change it, which and if I'm it stronger, was stronger, I'm better now because I'm a but, Navi. But if it yeah. was Colin 2.0, Jacob, even as a Navi, I'd be like, I got to get off this planet. That woman's <laughs> going to shoot me with an arrow. Like there's just no chance. Yeah. Yeah. And they're coming into the against her again. Yeah. They're coming into tribal villages fucking shit up uh but yeah like in the first movie i thought he was you know obviously a very one-dimensional character he was the bad marine but i thought the way they portrayed marines in avatar one was actually really good like the the marine mentality i've never seen it portrayed kind of that well in a movie before and it's his line a a poor va situation more than it is of the military yeah really we we got like the whole hook for do this jake sully yeah he wants to get his legs back right because he's handicapped yeah. And that's the whole hook that Stephen Lang uses to get him to like spy for him. He's like, oh, we can get you legs back on Earth and stuff. Easy. So, yeah. But the, yeah, yeah, but, the, the uh, stick to the, the, you know, keep moving forward kind of element of like military discipline and stuff like that. Like that enables, yeah. even, you know, Sully to fucking stick with it. And that, you know, informs his current decisions of protecting his family. Yes. Like he has a knowledge about tactics. And he yeah. runs his family unit like a military as well. He's got the communicators, mm-hmm. his son, dad, his son is I mean, I'm sorry. That. Yeah. Eyes one. I'm checking in. You know, he knows that he has to reach out to his Shane father. Zama, it's like Shane their military Zama. names. You know, yeah. Sully, you and I are not so different, you know, speech yes. <laughs> will happen. It's true. Yeah. Very I much mean, so. They're very, they, they have the dads. same military background. Uh, yeah, and we see kind of Jake's melding of his his marine background with the Navi lifestyle of how he runs his family, you know, disagreements with Nateri about how to raise their children and stuff like that. Um, Still got it's, a gun. it's all really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, but he's a Navi that uses the, a gun. Yeah, the parenting journey is a parallel for but Quark. I'm just going to call him Quark because it reminds me of Star Quark. <laughs> yeah. so Quark and Sully, there's a parallel parenting kind of journey, you know, with Spider and then their kids. There's also like... Um, the parallel from, like you said, Jake's journey with Quark's journey. So there is some interesting things happening. I, I just yeah. when I see Ray Ban guy, you're like going, "Hell yeah, dude!" You just, yeah, you know, I know. It gets a little cheesy, or, but it's very it's funny though. Thematically, or Tarzan stuff. jump onto a gun and him be like, "No, no, no, move over, kid." Why are they it's letting like, him run around? Wow. Oh my, I'll, we'll get to that. There's issues with this because the security protocol of having. That's, well, that's Quark's weakness is that yes. he finds out that he has this human son that he kind of feels indebted to. He's like, I'll take him around uh, and try to. It seems like he's trying to show him like why they're doing the things they're doing. But of course, Spider immediately is like, No, don't like. Why are you, you gotta, killing people and stuff? Then this yeah, is bad. You're never gonna get me around. Teaching them voluntarily. You know, you got to learn to ride these dragons. You probably couldn't do it because you're stupid. No. Yes. Tell me yeah. how to do it. You know, it's like okay, I'll tell you how. To so do it's it. a weird form of father son bonding, but also they're very different f- philosophically because Quaritch is still a bad guy, still trying to kill Jake Sully and every Navi that he can if he has yeah, to. Yeah, Sp- Spider gets captured and he's kind of there under duress, and it's like he doesn't want to leave him with the scientists because they'll fry his brain in interrogation. So he's like, hey, come yeah. with me, you know, whatever. But uh, if I was running that mission, I'm like, you, sir, are not Quarch. You are a digital reconstruction that we put in an avatar. We kind of own you, and you don't have clearance <laughs> to take this boy out you of can't. our supervision. <laughs> like, you should that be would right. not it's happen. <laughs> and that's where it's like, I don't know, the narrative's starting to get a little... But that's his fatal weakness, because in the whole movie, it's like, well, does he really care about Spider? How much does he really care? And then we find out in the climax when it's not to jump ahead too far, but he he's got a knife yeah, against arc. Yeah. one of the one of the Jake Sully kids. Natiri grabs Spider and has her knife to Spider's throat and is ready to kill Spider. And we see that Quaritch really does care about his son because he lets the other kid go. She cuts she cuts Spider's chest because at first he's like, I don't care about that kid. He's not mine. Yeah. He cuts his chest and he's like, All right, fuck Stop. it. You know? So let's I want to yeah. do 45 minutes on Spider, so let's keep rolling <laughs> while we're here, because yeah, I yeah, believe yeah. he is our self-proclaimed favorite character. Now, uh, he's a little kid who's covered in blue paint who says, it makes me move faster. We I'm got faster the whole... blue. Sonic, I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got the dread spike. Mm-hmm. We got the whole backstory. Knuckles. It's the brilliant line. It is just, I mean, it's James Cameron's best of, kids can't go in cryosleep, asshole. 
I mean, it just <laughs> where you're like, they set up the whole thing of it takes you five years. No, it's been five years, nine months, 34 days. That's the first lines of the first movie, right? You go, you can't put a fucking baby in one of those things. Do they grow that whole time? Like, like what? Like, do right. they, it just comes back. It's been five years. They're still a newborn. Like, what the fuck would occur? You get this kid who's running around. I was pretty worried about the breath pack the whole time. I think they kind of need to do away with that because I didn't want to keep thinking of like, is there going to be a moment where the kid starts getting suffocated because of the environment or like vice versa, but they never really went that way, but they would constantly be making you nervous about him using the air pack. They set up, right. yeah, bring your spare. That doesn't really pay off. But you would think, I kept no. thinking, it's going to happen. He's going to be out I'll track long. you by that thing, he kept saying, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not airtight. Yeah, but Spider, he's a great character, I Spider's think. Spider's an interesting uh, character, but the way they use him is makes me not like the plot. Like, the way that in really? the climax, he's allowed just to run around on the bridge and sure. fuck shit up. Why would you not have three guys with guns on him? Or chained up yeah. like he's the enemy i don't care what well Korch again i says. just think that's uh the kid they, is driving they shouldn't the, let the boat. do that he gets to stand this close to that guy and just be like so what is this thing <laughs> i'd be like get away but doesn't Korch have uh, yeah like yeah. seniority over everyone else sure. in terms i don't think of... he i don't think does an should. avatar does a yeah a slave not him. soldier a that we made yeah construct. i guess yeah, yeah i guess that um the the, the balance that i love of spider of to go back to the Natiri stuff of Natiri hates Spider. She thinks he is disgusting in the same way she her sees father him only as a thought. Human. Yeah, Jake yeah. Sully, but never the, be a Navi. Jake Sully's a dreamwalker. That's disgusting. But in this arc that they have of like, hey, I got five fucking fingers just like this idiot little you know monkey boy does. Like, cut him a break. To when he is on the boat at the end and he has gotten away, Mike, and he's kind of running around before the big climax. And he sees Natiri doing the savage killing where she has the knife and mm -hmm. she is ripping humans apart. And Bloodless. he has the moment where he could reveal himself to be like, it's me. Let's go get your daughter. And instead, what Spider does is hide because yeah, he's I afraid. Think what and he they're sees... trying to showcase is that, Jacob, these things are 10 feet tall monsters of what his dad has been saying. They are savages, right? Which it's the first time his world has ever opened up in that way. All he has ever wanted is to be these things. And he finds out Natiri did kill his father, which he didn't know about before that. Yes. Um, I think they may be setting up a heel turn from Spider in the next movie or a Ben Solo type of evolution for Quaritch, where he kind of comes sure. to Jesus moment and becomes more of a good character or realizes what he's doing is bad. They're going to go one of those two maybe. ways. I think. Yeah. But spider's going to have to do the, like, he didn't tell him that he saved Corch. So that's going to be a whole conversation. Right. You but know? I think in the next yeah. movie, it is going to be a thing with like spider versus the Navi children where it's like, he's not a true Navi and it's going to no. cause some drama. I I, think. But, but Jacob, hmm. I think the big drama there will be, of course we have our new love story, which is him and Kiri. I think yes. that, and again, it's Definitely so weird. I cannot that. imagine fucking 19-year-old Jack Champion having to do embrace scenes with 70-year-old Sigourney <laughs> Weaver pretending to Don't be a 12-year-old. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. You but get a body double and do the facial capture. You just let her sit in a chair, you know? <laughs> then again, what are you paying? <laughs> that seems to me like maybe we don't have Sigourney Weaver. If you can't ask it in 20 words or less, don't ask it. We're shooting this scene. <laughs> yeah, he, he screams that back at me. <laughs> and nails yeah. your phone to the wall. Um, yeah, dare exactly. you question, JC. Like a maniac. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> but I think there is hints of a relationship between yes. Spider and Kiri. Um, so it'll be this Natiri not accepting this human boy, right? You cannot, which is never be part of our she lost which is yeah. And the it's ironic thing of again. Natiri yes. is that she she hates Spider because of who he is. Yet she, of course, bonded and married with married to a Jake Sully, who was a former human in a Navi body. So how is he really different from Spider? Her very mate. Yeah. yeah. So she's gonna um, question her. Taruk Mato himself. Taruk Mato. But yeah, um, we, we see even the 
kids of Soli getting bullied by the water Navi because they have multiple fingers. So all that, it's like our kids are yes. kind of yeah. outcast. So for you to yes. hold Spider on a different pedestal. Because if you are the child of an avatar, you are born with four fingers instead of three fingers. You have or five, demon blood. Five, including the thumb instead of four. They don't count the thumb on this planet. Yeah, it's a yeah. Mike, perfect division moment. So let's just mm -hmm. say everything I just said, the spider getting stolen, um, the Quaritch stuff, looking at your body, the kids sort of exploring the outside world, and Jake Soley running missions to fight back against a human um, new settlement with a uh, Navi resistance. That yes. is what I want to call movie one, which mm -hmm. is the first of hour movies? of this film. Yeah. I'm not, I can't fully quantify if there's three. I don't know if this is just a separate one and that each hour well, is a different one. I don't know. Yeah. It's really split into three hours yes. where the first hour is all the stuff we've been talking about. Yes. The second hour is them going to the water tribe, doing a bunch of water yes. stuff. And that's really that's fun. A documentary then, format. The yeah. Hour. And then the third hour is basically one long action set piece taking place and, around but, a sinking but, ship but yeah. to me that's the wrap the up of that set so that just right. because because it's it doesn't stand alone it's just it's like you said it's just one long action scene where you're like really the whole hour is gonna be the wrap i thought up it here? was great though that's interesting that's an interesting ramp up let's stay here with the kids this sort of the the chill we so we need a to concept allies, yeah <laughs> but a concept that is totally alien to natiri think about this this there you cannot leave your village in navi culture there is no moving you do not just abandon everything you have to go learn to be you know you were a tailor now go sell cell phones that's not right. how the world works it would be like an apache going to join yes. the the sioux or something samurai like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's just yeah. Go, even better just go Maori. figure it out and you're like i right. but culturally what do i do so you literally get jake Sully being like i blew it I don't understand why I was fighting back against these humans. They're after me. Well, Just they're being, me, yeah. I guess. Quaritch uh, has a vendetta against Jake Sully, so they're hunting him down. He's the leader of the insurgency, I guess. And they think if they, you know, they kill the figurehead, it'll obviously morale will go down. In terms we're on of the land. Back. We yeah. got to get out of here. They go and join a new tribe, and and this this second movie shifts from Jake Sully being our lead actor to I would say the youngest one, whose name is I believe you said Lu Ka, Loak. Oh, no, he's the, son. the second yeah. son. Yeah, the, I would say Loak becomes our lead character now with Kiri a little bit, and it said becomes the children's journey of how do we accept not only our new environment but also. I have a new girlfriend who's the princess of this tribe. I also I've not seen have that the. Before. <laughs> I, certainly not in the first film. Right. I have uh, a whale best friend, and yes, he well, is going to get a backstory, and you will yes. be seeing his flashbacks, and he will get character development. He's, he feels like the the black sheep of the family, the outcast yes. of the family. And I would say, you know, the first Avatar, Jake Sully and Atiri, they're the main characters. I would agree, Loak. Kiri and Spider are probably the three main characters. Each of these kids is kind of, of going through the their own the second arc. film inside Way of the Water. Right, right. So technically yeah. what I will call the third Avatar movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the older brother, he's less of a character. He's not a real character. You said his name. That's It's impossible to even knew it. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> but Lorak, you know, is trying to live up to him, trying to live up to his dad. Uh, and kind of rebelling against his the family order and kind of getting yelled at by his dad a lot because he's rebelling and uh, things aren't so great, but he of course goes out, you know, he meets that whale, like you said, which is a whale that's outcast from the main whale pod. Yeah. Uh, his name the is uh, Payakon. Yeah. Payakon, they are killed... Tulkun, right? Tulkun, yeah. Damn, impressive. <laughs> and they are sentient <laughs> whales that can talk and can communicate with the yes, Navi. They can they make are. symphonies. She has so yeah. composed here's the a thing. symphony. You can... <laughs> she doesn't have fingers My to play instruments, sister... but she's great composer. My soul sister composed many symphonies. <laughs> Mike, that moment, I almost started crying. I was laughing so hard. Um, here's the thing. You... It's a lot like... We all have not seen that Black Panther movie. It seems a lot like that Black Panther movie. Or that Black Panther movie is a lot like too. this movie. Yes. But where they start saying, like, Tulkun, 
Tolkan or whatever that underwater city is. There's a lot of um, all of a sudden they all start communicating through sign language underwater. Well, that's the, right? the water tribe has. Which so is cool. Part of the second movie of this is the the Jake Sully family trying to fit in with these this new tribe. We see their bodies are different. They can't hold their breath as long underwater. They have to train. Yeah. They have to learn this sign language that they use underwater to communicate. Um, their tails aren't you know like the water tails their arms are thin because they're swinging from trees not swimming in the water um so they're getting used to it they have to learn how to ride Thanks. the water mounts and stuff and, and all again, that stuff conceptually I was, was great yeah. amazing looked amazing again the water effects like you're saying and to mm-hmm. like cliff curtis calls out he says they are babies you know again culturally they all Which have is what Natiri no said about standing for this so like why, why would we do this one. yes he's useless again <laughs> Human becoming a Navi. Now we have Navi yes. becoming Navi. We're doing some of the yes. same beats with the next generation, I guess. But yeah, uh, he is Love rebelling. Um, low, low blow. Low act. He's, he, low act. He's rebelling. Uh, but he has like good instincts. But he goes against the the standard order. You know what I mean? And he, they're not made to feel welcome with the water Navi. He's getting initially. bullied by yeah, the so son like, of the tribe leader. Uh-huh. Yeah. You time. think he's getting bullied, murdered. You think you swim with a solo Tolkoon? No Tolkoon goes by itself. <laughs> oh, there he is. That's, That's the, the solo Tolkoon. Polka. Payakon. Payakon. Well, he had a name, so yes, you did know that one of them swam by itself. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Yes, they but, leave uh, the Ometakaya tribe to join the Metkayina tribe, in case you're wow. Ah, yes, yeah. yes. And, oh, that's right, because it said it in the uh, papyrus font. That's right on on screen. That's right. That's Every right. Every time it popped up, I'm like, the balls of James Cameron. <laughs> leave it. He used it in the first movie. He's gonna keep using Every it. Every time care. it popped up, Mike, I thought it would do that thing movies kind of do, where it would pop up in another language, and then the letters kind of like turn to English, where you, and then just it's papyrus. like, this is where it really is. But it's like, just but papyrus. also, just the balls of him to be like, no. I'm telling you, it's a location and a tribe on Avatar. You've never seen these these words mean nothing to you, but guess what? Three it brothers is important. rock or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're know, like three. It's like what? What does three brothers rock mean to me? Just because later he's gonna say it's over at three brothers rock. But I mean, in the first movie, we <laughs> had the Hallelujah the Mountain. Yes, and the Hallelujah. I love the world That's building where he's just world. expanding the world. It's amazing. Of- and compared to like Star Wars, where like every planet on Star Wars is like a one biome planet. You yes. Got your sand planet. You got your forest planet. You got your water planet. It Pandora is just like Earth. It's got other biomes and other ways Jacob, to live. Right. Mm-hmm. To that point you just said, if in the fucking Star Wars cantina, if the Jawas we knew came in that were sandy, perfect, and then. Two others came in in blue robes. That Their were like, water jaws. Water was like coming out of the robes, like they're like wet or something. Ring I would be like, out. bull shit. Like, I would be so fucking mad about that. Right. But in the James Cameron world, you're like, oh, the sign, like it's all there. He, he's thinking about every aspect. But if you of remember it. in the first Avatar, yeah. when they're gathering all the tribes, they go to the Plains tribes yes. and talk to them and all that stuff. So there, we see that there are other tribes that live differently than how the woods Navi live. They band uh, together. And they're consider, yeah. he's considering like selective, um, like mutations of, you know, like nature, you know, that's why they have right. better hands. He's like, he, he's thinking a lot right. of stuff like this very heady, you know, nature nerd shit. And he's including that, which I can appreciate. Well, you can. Yeah. And he's kind of even, you know, race as we know it on earth. A lot of the physical differences were evolutionary in that people from hotter climates have darker skin naturally to Taller, protect thinner. themselves from the sun and stuff like that. So then, that's how we got these this identity of, of different races on earth. Right. Right. right, right. So it's the it's, same thing with the Navi, just kind of even more biologically different in terms of the way their tails and, and arms are. And I, stuff. I, yeah. I would like to, I would like to, <laughs> I would like to see a third film or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth or a seventh have a Navi antagonist who is sort of, I'm not saying it has to be race-based, but some sort of like our tribe is superior. We're at war with all the other tribes. Because it seems like there the is... <laughs> Mike? Because it seems like there's no concept for that in Avatar, in James Cameron's Pandora. So well, it far, seems before the, it's all the sky He's people slowly. came, yeah. everyone was just getting along yeah, on Pandora. It's just the eco, because we all... But again, if God... 
if you could point to me and be like, God is that tree, I think we would probably have peace on this earth if I could poke my finger right. at it. And the tree was like, it is me. I am God. Well, that's what's funny when they're talking about yeah. Kiri and she's like, oh, she's she has epilepsy. That's why she's having these religious uh, delusions. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, delusions? This is a planet where people can literally yeah. communicate with God. Why don't about? you believe her? Yeah. We literally but, have visions. We plug into animals on purpose to, to yeah, like right. get their perspective. <laughs> we can plug our we can plug our ponytail into the tree. And Ultimate get some empathy memories. and yeah. I suppose they would maybe ally themselves with the human faction. They'd be like, oh, we'll we'll hook you up. You know, you want you want that land over there that's got good shit. We'll take it over for you if you work with us. Other now, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's like the, the where the humans. I, I would I would like to see some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no. humans hire a more warlike tribe to fight against Navi. That could be an interesting angle to for sure. further their interest but for this one we now have you know we're gaining the trust of the water tribe and uh we meet the whales that come migrating and that's you know th- there's a strong bond between the migrating whales and we meet a mother whale and the cat soul and, sister you know yeah the soul sister they can literally things. talk to each other yeah yeah how's your baby which how they subtitle it because they, the navi just know the imagine. whale language yeah which is so, you know, just imagine cool. But yeah, that papyrus um, subtitle going in, and they made us watch the Ryan Gosling sketch before the, the movie. They played that where he's like, <laughs> "They did, Iris, yeah." Because there's Alamo Draft. What there. they played a lot of that's amazing. amazing. So anyway, um, that is a funny sketch, that, and that that kind of sets up this big, kind of the biggest, second biggest emotional beat, or first, depending on where where you land. It's like Jacob said, you know, this is leading into that big third act as we kind of head to the finish line. Uh, yeah, the whaling company, and um, you know, like they yes. say, they're getting brain juice because it gives you immortality. And <laughs> no whale has ever committed a, a crime of passion, nor an act of uh, anger, and uh, right. that makes back. them easy targets. They'll never mm-hmm. fight back. So we've Ex- got Jermaine yeah. Clements, one of the Flight of the Concords, doing an American right. accent. Randomly Meanwhile, the other guy gets up. to be Australian. So I don't yeah. know why he couldn't so why... be a New Zealander. <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. Um, yeah, we the get the Americans captain look sympathetic. I'm not that familiar with the, the captain actor, no but, idea that guy uh, yeah, we get this whaling ship, uh, Quaritch and his gang are kind of hopping, a, hopping a ride on, uh, this whaling ship to attack the, to go into the sea villages. There's a bunch of villages on these islands and look for Jake Sully cause they know he's in there somewhere and they're using whales to draw them out because they know if they you know, kill some innocent whales. It'll draw out the Navi and they can fight Jake Sully, right? You no, know, I've got quotas. We got to get some of these whales. I've got quotas. That's right. I'm Capitalism. Honey brain juice. <laughs> so we, we encounter kind of the same pot of whales from the village, at which point, of course, they single out the mother, the soul sister with the calf because it will swim slower to not leave the calf. And unfortunately, it's, it's horrific. And the method with the, the balloons and stuff, like it's really imaginative, but it's, it's fucking... Yeah really sad it's it's pretty grim that. and then they you know take the brain juice out or whatever and then even spiders like so that's it you're just going to throw the rest of the entire carcass away you're not going to use every part of it like the navi do um mm-hmm. and that's just another obviously very unsubtle commentary on hmm. humans uh and you know whaling in the environment and do you, natural yeah. resources do you guys remember Shark in soup, the you know? 2000s well yeah there was kind of that theory, uh, and truly it made its way to movies in Deep Blue Sea, this is the premise of it, but that brains of sharks do not age, that sharks do not age in general. So their brains don't age, and they will not suffer dementia, stuff like that. Right. People did a lot of research. Mm. It's now been debunked, but it's one of those things where I'm like, is that <laughs> – does Jim Cameron just like still think this? <laughs> well, isn't it like yeah. alligators don't yeah. like alligators will live forever unless something kills them. The, a lobster, like, they don't die a lobster, of old age. A lobster's body will never degenerate. Yeah. Right. They'll just keep going. Um, so there could be uses for humans to, you know, slow down aging or whatever. This whale juice completely stops human aging, as they say. So it's the, now the most valuable resource in the well, world, even more valuable than one of Tavian. Eighty million, though. Yeah, eighty million, and more like avatars. eighty billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but, Jacob, I'm seeing a lot of people. I think kind of get mixed up here, where they. I've seen reviewers go like, "Way of the Water's bad." James Cameron, he gets wrapped up in his same stuff. He trades out unobtainium for whale juice, and and it has I, a name, but I won't ever. 
remember I, who, who my chrono brain i don't even know knows. the name yeah. but i disagree mm. with that because i think they're conflating of Edie falco is not saying that they came to this planet for the whale juice they are coming That's to pandora to yeah. take it over i yeah. i think people are mixed up going like oh and then so in the third one they'll use the whale juice this is this is just for the plot jacob just said of yeah. drawing these people out it is more that Quaritch hops on this expedition of a totally separate thing that is also a violent crime against nature because there are, as James Cameron's, again, kind of fumbly trying to say, we're not just exploiting one resource. It's like the, no, the whole point of humanity come, is like, yes, yeah. it's like we attack every everything. angle. We yes. it all up. And we learned that yes. our, our telecom or whatever, our killer whale, he at one point had led a, 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 a thank you, yeah, rebellion. Um, and he was got like his fuck fellow this. whales killed. He lost a yes. fin. And then, so that's Which is why, he why he's an outcast. Because, because show yeah. me, show me your memories, Mike Coon. Yeah. Because they Coon. blame him or he's responsible he, for those deaths. And he chose if a whale violence. kills another whale. Yeah. Yeah. So um so yeah, the whale juice is very much a side venture of the humans. Yeah, they are trying everybody to everybody who's worried about that. Don't worry yeah. about the whale juice. It's the like, thing is, unobtainium is still probably a thing they're mining. Yes. It's just not important to this I movie. I have a whale juice theory for the wrap up. Well, Put a pin oh, okay. In that. We'll put a pin in that with a little um, tracker so we won't forget it. But the yeah. plan works essentially because plan at works. that point, that's that's the, the queen's yes. you know, soul sister. Sister whale, yes. Sister whale. And it's like, <laughs> all bets are off. Jake Sully, like, fuck, you brought this shit on us. But now all bets are off. We're going. We're going. That's and of course, they of do family. exactly what Quarch is expecting. Uh -huh. And they go right. confront him um and this of course they've ending. also yes they've kidnapped several of jake sully's children and also the daughter of the chieftain and, and kate winslet um so they've got a couple of the children captured they're using them as hostages and he says you know send jake sully in alone of course he's gonna do it uh and then there's a big action scene and they fuck up this whole whaling boat in a very uh satisfying way i think there's an action uh, scene that precedes the children being uncuffed, recuffed, uncuffed, yes. recuffed. Uh, I'm always tied up. tied up again. <laughs> the little yes. girl has to call it out. You want you want to say by the second time, James, you know how to make these movies. You know that the stakes wouldn't make sense to keep reintroducing your characters to danger. It has to be organic. You cannot just this this force. Well, it's almost push. like they yeah. needed tuck, they needed something for tuck like she's in the middle of all this action let's keep her tied up so that she you know we know what's I, going on we yes. know where she is there's a lot of people are obviously making the comparison to leonardo DiCaprio handcuffed in the titanic with the water coming in it seems like james very much had that idea yes. i would argue more either one of the five story people or one of the three credited screenwriters who are not James Cameron first came to the conclusion of the scene where the children are explained the way of water is so important and so powerful that it's the, the, the moral and peak of the second act or the second mm -hmm. film, right? Is these kids doing this, that how incredible will it be when we get to the end of the third act a disaster is happening in two different areas, and both the kids have to say to their parents, here's this new culture we've learned. We have fit in. Father, here is the way of water. And they sum yes. up the whole movie in this incredible speech, right, where literally you're like, this is why James Cameron made this movie, is this kid saying, we're all water. When you die, you're water. When you're born, you're water. Protect Breathe. Us. I love you. And I'm sitting there as a viewer going like, and Jake Soley will die. Yeah. James Cameron mm. is making the choice here to fix the problem of the first film, which is that he got saddled with a lead actor that nobody likes. That's totally fine. And he will make the right choice here to kill Jake Soley. And I got to say, guys, I was fucking shocked that I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's, you know, Jake Soley doesn't die, obviously, but it's the eldest son that dies instead. Right. And um, Jacob getting up, running to the bathroom as fast as he right, can. Right. <laughs> yes. Wanna... Not important. I'll skip this no, scene. No, yeah. you know, you'll, Cause you're going to go see Mateo. Um, yeah. I want to piggyback off a of concept. Cause we yeah. kind of mentioned this at the top. It's about 
the familial bonds and like you can learn from your children too. You don't just have to yes. think that you're right all the time. And even the the old heads who said that's just a killer whale, I don't want to hear it. Well, you were wrong, and he saves the day. And you should have listened to your kid on that. That's know? right. So that's there's right. A, this and message of pay attention to the youth because they're learning shit that you're yes. not, and you don't have all the answers. You know, Which and I that's really the core of this movie. If you pare it down to just the very basic core, it is, I think, Jake Sully's relationship with Loak, the second son, who mm-hmm. he doesn't understand. Like Nateam is like perfect, and he's going to be this, you know great warrior when he grows up and stuff he does everything right then you have the second son who has to just live in his shadow constantly and wants to impress his dad but manages to just fuck it up every time uh and it's about their relationship and jake sully being at the end i see you that was a very emotional moment for me where he's like finally sees his son yeah Yeah. not to be the most basic bitch but it truly Mm -hmm. is like when you are a parent and you're like fuck i taught my kids something that's incredible and it's that basic thing of being like, I potty trained my kids fucking two days later. He's coming in saying, Daddy, I used the pot. And you're like, fuck, we did this thing together. This the future. It's happening. But again, that's something dads get at that level. James Cameron's kids are like in their 20s. And he's like, you know what? Having kids being a dad this is crazy and you're like yeah you've been a dad for like two decades now right it took <laughs> yeah. Sully a near-death experience to see his son for the first time yeah yeah right. well yeah he was never drowning with his son he should have taken his kid to the bottom of the trench mike <laughs> yeah, really hop in on this movie. if this thing wasn't yeah. one seater i would have brought you around more often you know i'm sorry they only make them at one well maybe it is yeah him uh, trying to make up for for lost time right. with with his kids i mean and i don't it, know his Hundred percent, but no, not great. <laughs> but but that being said, the, the story of yeah. the, the movie, right? It that that works. Yeah. The emotional core, it's so powerful. Where the details get iffy, and that's I have some issues with the final battle. Again, the emotional core yes. is great, you know, sure. and also slap bracelet handcuffs, sick, <laughs> great vision. Well, yeah. yes. Um, the a film we talked about earlier this year, Thor: Love and Thunder, is about generations rising up and literally him passing on you know what is it going to be like for our kids this world Mm -hmm. i liked that message i think that is absolutely fumbled in the presentation of that film Mm -hmm. this i am truly like when he says solely stick together at the end i'm like solely stick together i'm like like whispering it to myself like yeah absolutely goonies never die (laughs) um (laughs) they had to escape a flood too you know um but with this thing here we have all of the the water navi and you know our main sully crew and and whales and we're yes. fucking up the humans but then by the time the eclipse hits all the other water navi and whales are like our right, job's done here fuck it they do like, kind of disappear have, yeah th- so that stuff fire everywhere. that's maybe the biggest plot hole that i yes. have with this movie where it's like yeah they just kind of disappear at it's some point and just sequence. becomes the sully family it just makes yeah. no sense yeah but you could have had all the water navi get you the fuck out of there. They're masters of the ocean. They would have just swam under there and pulled your ass out. None of that tension you is all artificial. Very expensive actors to do it. And the thing yeah, is, you, you know, this them. is I think that's something that just got lost in editing where it's like, it's a three plus hour movie. It's gonna be a little messy at times. And I think it is a little like structurally a little messy at times. I can yeah. I can Some admit to that. Issues here and there. But in yeah. a vacuum, yeah, the whole But I love the scene when uh drowning, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have Jake Sully trapped in the boat, kind of very reminiscent again of Titanic. Uh, and we have Loak, who's kind of learned the waterways to save him. Um, I also want to mention that Pyacon, when he's when he attacks that boat and kills the uh, whaling captain, which is which mm-hmm. is Colin and I's like laugh out yes. loud moment. <laughs> and our audience went crazy. Oh, the three D arm thing. Yeah. His yeah. arm flies <laughs> off. And Does if you think Pyacon about it, die Pyacon... in that final battle. I, no, I think he, he, saved he lives. Sully. Yeah, okay. he saves Sully. Um, Pyacon, if oh, you they remember, do rise lost up. That's a right, fin. Yes. Yes. Pyacon a lost a fin. Moment. He gets oh, the captain so back gets the and arm. cuts his arm off. Yeah, and it's retribution for losing oh a fin. Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe Forgot about that. Genius. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted <laughs> you, might <JC>. be. <laughs> That's right. Who's harpooning who now? As, who Jane, as Jermaine now? Clement yeah. says. Yeah. That's right. I have, man. That whole thing, too, that it's like, that guy's just like, yeah, these guys are fuckers. I hate these guys. <laughs> hey, Spider, these guys are bad, huh? It's like, well, well he's the scientist. He's like Grace in the first movie. It They're kind of begrudgingly working with yeah. the Marines, but 
it's you know science versus military they're not going to get along and he knows what they're doing is bad like whaling is bad That's whaling's bad on earth too <laughs> yeah yes yeah. it pays he's for not all a of strong enough research. character to stop it yeah mm-hmm. very interesting scientist character who doesn't really get much to do or really any payoff but you know whatever i assume he I think that makes him interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well mm. but that's like that's the gist though right i mean some some like the fight scene and like oh hey why don't we settle this another time i'll let your kid go and then like nah, fuck yes. it, we'll do it now like that knife fight, like some of that those action scenes and again um uh what's the wife's name natiri 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 yeah she is crazy in that feral yes. state yeah like, bloodlust after the loss of her son it's nuts and it's like well it's she's awesome. already lost a son yeah she doesn't want to lose another child so and she doesn't see yeah. spider as her child so we get that standoff with quaritch where they each have one of their spider? children because... <laughs> he's like a stray cat always around me and my family we're... oh hold on <laughs> sorry I, I got stuck in a jake sully monologue <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that final hour, the yes. action, the visuals, first of all, are incredible. It's like, you know, really nothing that we've ever seen before, even to Avatar 1, a huge step up in visuals, the choreography of the action, like all the, just Navi fucking up humans. Like, it's so you satisfying. You never to watch. lose the sense of scale, Jacob. The, yeah. The Navi and the human. That's what every really time makes they it so arrow, fascinating. Fucking yeah. right in the heart, like it's like a javelin, uh, so satisfying. Yeah, yeah. wild. It is my yeah. Imagine a spear this big hitting your right. the fucking head. Truly, it would yeah. just like split your skull open. Which is and, in the scope of this, saying like, oh, the plot is for baby children, but then the end act is like fire and knife fights and like yes. this crazy revenge state, murdering humans. It's and like, who, who the, is this for? And a kid yeah. giving a very heartfelt speech to his father, and then the final payoff. Of course, you get this. You get you get the moment where you're like, oh, you fucking suck, James Cameron, because it does seem like Mike. He's going like, well, goodbye, water tribe on to volcano tribe. You know, being a Navi, it's hard because we're going to have to dig in the city. You're like, no, no, no. Shh, shh. And he says to Cliff Curtis, you know, we'll get out of here. And they say, no, you are part of this tribe. now. Yeah. The war we're has come Kaina to us. Mm-hmm. I lose a little of it at the end, Jacob scale wise, where I'm like, so what again was the point of all this? You got the guy who was hunting you off your back. That's of course not going to stop the earthers from colonizing the planet. You've stopped no. your one-on-one guerrilla skirmishes. So it seems like there's sort of like a tete a tete, but like obviously tensions are high. Like it feels like yeah. the war has completely disappeared by the final act. And it is just the personal showdown. Stakes well, wise, I love that, but it, it it makes it feel very Empire Strikes Back or middle movie of like, well, haha, here we go again. But the big war sure is coming up down the road. Totally, I yes, think that's yes. that, it, that, that is how it is. Where coffee it's, cup and a robot just planning the rest. Yeah, of the, war. <laughs> the humans are still there. Like they've won a small victory in a yeah. battle, but they haven't won the war. Like the war is still going to be ongoing, and that's why there's going to yes. be five more Avatar movies. But um, but you Wars. didn't even stop the threat to your family. You did. You don't know that because they I think Quaritch is dead or they might. But, do they know Quaritch is still alive? They no. think he's dead. But of course, my feeling is sort of what you hinted before. I think the third film is all about him being like, you know, where where is my place in the world and the, the weird Quaritch of it all. So yeah. they have eliminated that. But again, not really. But and then it's like. Well, you stopped a whaling excursion. Did this stop all the whales from getting fucked with? Well, no, I, but does, the whole I don't have scale of the of states. Yeah, the scale of the human invasion is so large that like it's they're trying, so they're an insurgency, and they're trying to fight back. But it's when like, yeah, yeah. When you talk about scale, they show the humans unloading, and then the power suits unloading, and then gigantic yeah. bulldozers that are larger right. even still than the power suits. These it's robots like, can build a building in three days, and you're like, and I oh did, my gosh. I yeah. did like some of the new human stuff, like the crab walker things. Those oh, were so cool. Yeah, <laughs> Every yeah. time those shot into the water, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah the the new mech that Edie Falco has, which is just like a hand suit that the hands do just whatever like your hands do. Yeah. yeah. They're trying, they're adapting and trying new things against the Navi um, yeah. because they ultimately want to take over the entire planet. 
I forgot and how's that gonna happen boxing that fucking thing in the her exoskeleton <laughs> yeah it doesn't like you know that like <sighs> is there something in the first one where they say like it has to be the navi because of this because it's like there are so many other invasive species or deadly predators isn't the next one, aren't they, isn't Giovanni Rabisi just going to be like, the dire wolves that were, you know, the big creatures in the first one, we mixed their DNA with the marines and the Navi and Dang, the fucking werewolf, skitter Navi scatter avatar. fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're maybe. just like, oh shit, he's like monster tar. <laughs> the banshee what? avatar, you know, you're a dragon. Yeah. yeah. That could be, those could be ideas. But I mean, obviously it is a parable for the expansion into like the americas of you know yes. from people from europe coming in making deals with the native people in general, but yeah well it's not yeah. real i mean there wasn't anybody here on this continent thank god no no till columbus found <laughs> no, it, no. you know yeah yeah, yeah that's right. of course he discovered it totally yeah. empty right <laughs> um columbus but yeah how do you think Navi this Navi. ends i mean uh the where are we going to live peacefully with the Navi. The, the big questions it seems like are um, the state of the Soli family, what's going to happen with them? Are they going to stay in this new tribe? Are they going to be able to return to their own? What's going to happen with the Earth experience here? What is the big questions for Kiri? Are we going to sort of get an answer for her origin? And what does it mean to the greater mythos of the Navi? And, um, of course, the Quaritch stuff. Where, where yeah. will this displaced avatar find his place in the world? Inspired. All those mysteries... And Spider and the Our kids. Our favorite character. And Spider and the kids. At all these mysteries, um, I the big one to me is the Kiri, because I guess I would like to see it go unexpected ways. If it is just E-Way, I don't understand what the big shock about that is or what radical fallout that would have for their culture if she's sort of just reincarnating herself or if E-Way made a mistake of Oh, you meant pass her consciousness? I thought you meant put her consciousness in in a egg inside her body, and then I would fertilize that, and you know, whatever. Right. whatever. But it maybe Kiri is like literally Awa because we see that she yes. can kind of control the she control nature to the degree she that even the spiritual underwater. leaders can't. Yeah. Yes, yeah. very much. So. But is there? But there's so the, the 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 Darth Vader style father twist has been used for Spider. Is there anything sinister we could go with, Kiri? Is there a devil of the the Navi culture, an opposite of Iwa, who could They're sort in the of fire have, tree? Maybe, yeah. yeah, the virus in the system who got you know. I I I just don't understand. I guess it's it's really fascinating. I don't understand why he's asking these questions without giving the answer because the question isn't that fascinating. It's just interesting Kitty Pelton. no yeah it's kind of sense? i kind of know what he's where he's going with it unless he goes in a totally unexpected direction that's what i'm worried about <laughs> yeah <laughs> or maybe i'm not is, i don't know yeah it is kind of leaving threads open for avatar 3 yes um which i'm glad because you know you got to have story beats to kind of continue and here's what he said originally five film arc okay now he says he wants to do seven i don't know if i believe that but let's say he gets to do the five. He has said, if this one doesn't do well, three is 90% shot and like yeah. edited and complete and done or whatever. It could, it's made in a way that can, it can be the conclusion if it needs he to be. He could right? just let this be a trilogy. So even right. him saying that makes me think like, you could be right, Jacob. We could be seeing the end of the Soli saga here as we know it. And then it would expand out to a bigger familial world. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to a certain degree, some of these were shot at the same time, like the Lord of the Rings, at least yeah. like three. And uh, which he's very inspired by, and why he shot in New Zealand, he said. Yes, mm -hmm. and I know, like three, he said, like you know, he has a nine-hour cut of three that he wants to animate the whole thing before editing. Mm -hmm. uh, he said four. He sent his his treat his story treatment of four to the studio, and they gave him zero notes. They only said, "Holy fuck!" That was a quote from him yeah so <laughs> that that just you know, adds to my a god wow uh theory. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but it is it is sort of a george R. R. martin situation where it's yeah. like let's see how many you get through for the rest of your life you know <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> don't yeah, over yeah. We're, we're all proud of you everybody's liking this let's keep this energy going but I'm like very let's impress sir yeah yeah, yeah.
but, but um, let's don't over under promise and over yeah exactly let's let's yeah. put some hard guidelines i don't think humility is something james cameron is familiar with he seems to just <laughs> no. be this shit is gonna blow your mind fuck you instead of like i went to painstaking detail to bring you an experience like none other i sure hope you enjoyed he's like nah this thing's crazy if you don't like it fuck yeah. off right <laughs> but uh but i kind of this... like that attitude i know some people it might you know, they might bother them or hit them the wrong way. But There's for me, it's like confidence that he has. I, yeah. yeah, I admire the confidence. I admire. And like this, this is a man that's bet on himself so many times in one that he really <laughs> probably <laughs> thinks he can do no wrong. You know, well, there's two <laughs> that sides is incredible. That. One of them used to make shoes and rap music uh, where it went a lot darker. But to accomplish something like this, I think you need to have that belief in yourself to even get to the point where you think you can pull it off and actually have the guts to go for it. So, you know, respect, you know, on that. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, the end of hour two of our, <laughs> our, right. our so, podcast. Let's keep so it going. Now we, the wrap it up no, right? now we do the hour on spider. <laughs> yes. Now it's an hour of action where we're fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. Over whether this is good or not. Find out uh, yeah, our right. final thoughts <laughs> right after this. We're back. We're talking the end of Avatar here. And we've been laughing. I'm not going to say anybody here regrets seeing this movie that we saw or said it was bad. Um, again, we saw it in theaters. Have theaters returned? Uh, is this the savior? Mike talked a little bit about the uh, foreign opening. This is, again, one of the first films that will open in China in, I believe, since COVID, right? So, mm-hmm. Of course, they have their zero COVID uh, mandates where uh, they've basically been in lockdown for the last several years right. they're starting to roll that back due to some protests but yeah right the theater yeah, going no film this is not really in full force let's say no for our purposes but you know is is this box office going to be enough to keep this going i would say regardless of that it seems like goodwill um i don't know that if wednesday you know one of the past episodes we've talked about which seemed like it absorbed the culture for a minute mm-hmm had come out at the same time as Avatar, if that would have happened. I, I feel like Avatar is now siphoning off some energy and it's maybe going to be the thing we all kind of discuss for a minute. I haven't seen breakout memes and stuff of like, yo, I'm naming my kid Spider. What are, what are we doing here or anything yeah, like brother. that? But I, I hope we get there. I think um, it also it should be highlighted that kind of what we have coming out, like from now until February, there ain't, shit so yeah this has got a long time just to crush well and i think it will even just word and a out big or... reason for that is mm-hmm. that other studios purposely avoided this time yes. because of avatar they don't want to compete with it directly i think the next big movie to come out is ant the new ant-man right and that's in wakanda February. came out a month earlier it's staying in number two in the box office nothing released simultaneously with avatar and mm-hmm. now next week you get the christmas kids programming you'll get well not kids but babylon definitely not for kids and then puss in boots That's the last oscar wish. people yeah. yes oh and yes, you're, yes you're getting some oscar uh stuff like that yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be avatar for at least another month i would say number one but i i it's still i'm still he- hearing a lot of people like you went to the theater for that? And it's like, yes. What else are you going to go for? But, right. And now, Mike, my announcement, and I've been saying this off pod, but I'll say this on pod here. Mm-hmm. This is the last long movie I'm ever going to. And wow. you say, what else are you going to? I agree with that. If the branding shifted, if they now said things like, it's not even a movie, it's we call them mega blockbusters. Zack Snyder's Justice League, Way of Water, fucking Wakanda yeah. got close to fucking three hours. If, Top if Gun this Maverick, is the trend that th- that's these not super fucking long, things, that's not super long, Doc. That's right. only two hours. It's super I'm talking well about, selling. But Doc, trying to I'm get talking you to stop about binging and go outside for a long period exactly. of time. Exactly. Yes. They are. It, if they're going to do that shit, market it differently. Fucking upscale and charge me more. Charge me. Jacob and I paid fucking fourteen fifty for 3D matinee tickets. They're already fucking expensive. If, if that's Jeez. how it's going, sell me your mega movies. That way you can test it. And when the 90-minute rated R films still start making monies at theaters, I'll know I'm right. And that people don't want these mega movies. Be done well, with them. I, cast them away. <laughs> I... Agree and disagree to a certain extent because I've I've mentioned, you know, my thoughts on long movies before, but I've always think I've been consistent in saying 
if it's a movie that I think is good and think is deserving of the length, then I don't mind it being long. You're I, again, it, you I think it's a, that. yeah. Yeah. What I don't like is bad movies that are long for no reason. And yeah, I do think this movie is too long. It could be it's way too long, half Second an hour to 45 drag. minutes shorter for sure. Mm. But at the same time, I think it's more of a personal thing where it's like, look at the Lord of the Rings extended edition. Are those movies too long? Well, some people would say yes, but if you're a huge fan of the world and the lore, you're going to want to see everything related to that. Same with Avatar. If you're a fan of Avatar already, you're going to want to see every scene available. Like you want to see the longest cut possible. So Mm -hmm. it's just a personal, personal preference. I think if there was a four hour movies called Kevin Feige's Avengers, I would not watch it. (laughs) No, I would would say I was talking to my mom and my stepdad about this. I was like, yeah, it was like three hours and 10 minutes. They're like, was there an intermission? And I was like, oh, that would be a great idea. If they brought back That's intermission, they, should they used to do that. Gone with the Wind, Blade a three-hour movie with an intermission in the middle in theaters. People would, they would stop the movie for like 15 minutes, play some, you know, organ music or whatever. Yeah, That's what we need to bring play. back. If you're going to have a long-ass movie like that, yeah, why not have an intermission so people can use the bathroom and not have to miss a pivotal death scene, you know? Yeah, bring back the intermissions, yeah. There, remember, I always got to shout out long movies. There's a website called when to pee or something.com. And it'll right. tell you when the, you know. I should have checked that. It's when they're in the water village, okay? Don't worry. Um, yeah. I guess, but again, well, like, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was just going to sit. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Go I ahead. see you. You go. <laughs> I see you. I see you. Um, I was just going to say, you know, with every MC, the, the thing that I don't like is the trend of like every MCU movie getting longer and longer. Boy. Movies that don't need to be so long. Two out, like 90 minute, 90 to 120 minutes is really the ideal length, I think, for most movies. Yeah, but it's part market. of the meta that if you push three hours, that means other movies have less opportunity to be screened. You're taking True. up more time. So there's there's a meta behind screen ownership. But I also Very think true. that, Mike, there's this it. belief of, like, it's not an epic unless it is. Like, I'm making the Lawrence Arabia of blue fish people movies. And it's like, right. well, Quantumania okay. is not that. Yeah. No. Every movie is not an epic. Even if you make it epic in length, no. it's not going to feel epic. It's just going to feel but, too long. But mm-hmm. your runtime has no reflection on that. 90-minute movies can feel gigantic, too, yes. in the way that they're shot, produced, presented, and affected. Like it, I Absolutely. Bet. Yeah. And, and let me, you know, I said I, I, did, I don't love Avatar. I don't love Avatar Way of the Water, although we've been talking the hell out of it. You know, we're still going. I maybe love it now more than when I might we have talked myself into guys. liking yeah. it more. <laughs> You were pretty negative at the work. beginning of the podcast. Yeah. You know, J- Jacob has shown us the way of the Navi, and now we're <laughs> softening our steps. But, uh, see, Jacob. but uh, there's a version of this that's like uh, an hour and 20 minutes. It's very tight because there's a lot of stuff with like um, Quark and Spider where it's like they're just gone for like an hour and a half. And it like doesn't feel like his pursuit is very like it's not time sensitive. It's like, ah, eh, fuck it. Well, well it's, it's almost like he it. had so many ideas. He's like, well, I got to fit all this stuff into right. this movie. Well, so here he's the star better. of the eighth of this film, and you're like the eighth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's almost like he had too many ideas for one yeah. movie. Yeah, and but again, he has all these other cut. ideas for other sequels. So yeah, he just has boy. so many, so he much. He took to do and turned time. down thirty other pitches. I mean, there. This is wow. a world where there are so many ideas. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then yeah. he has a nine-hour cut. You already have the next three movies. Just chop it into three pieces. That's what I don't You're understand. Done. You're already like, done that, with the next yeah, three movies. That makes but he's weird. already has so many ideas for the... He, he's just going to make ten sequels at that point. What he's going to learn to do is so he, either, he either needs whale juice or to upload his brain into an avatar <laughs> so he can keep making them forever. But that's right. I am James Cameron. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Fifth. Let It'll me be just... like the Feige bot in She-Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Correct. I will um, try to concisely say maybe why I'm not in love with this, although it's impressive when we've talked to it a lot. It's just the stuff we said, just in summary. Plot, things are weird. Why military clearance let Spider run around on a boat and ruin it? Makes no sense. But the emotional core is there. The plot is goofy and sometimes inconsistent. A little bit of retconning. And really, at the end of the day, that's fine. It just seems like for what the core story is, I don't love Pandora as a fantasy world. It's It's beautiful to see i just it doesn't have its hooks yeah. in me so mm-hmm. it to me just feels like a huge waste of money for a very simple story that is sure. just james cameron's 
fetish but it's his passion project and his money he'll do what he wants but for me the story doesn't warrant the budget if that makes i sense. would it does make sense and i would say you're not wrong on some of your points i agree with you um at the same time like i think it has a lot of the same issues that the first movie had where it has a very basic plot Mm -hmm. But the plot is really more of a vehicle to set up this whole world and the the characters and their relationships within the world. Yeah, the plot is messy. It's it's poorly structured, poorly paced at times, too long. Mm -hmm. All that being said, like I still think it's like a great achievement in terms of cinematic, you know, just cinematic achievements. Like when you again, it's to compare to other. It's a technical marvel, but even aside from that, like I, I think I do like the world of Pandora more than you guys, and I think that's, that's sort fine. of the selling point. Where if you're into that world, it's just like anything, like Star Wars. If you're not into yeah. the Star Wars lore, you're not going to like Star Wars movies that much. Like you said, I'm I'm the Lord of the Rings of this, you know. Yeah, I could not yeah. get enough of those kind of original movies and those worlds, or right? Whatever. And Lord of the Rings, a lot of the same themes, you know, with. Yeah. Uh, industrialization but and, that and, said i watched alita right after this jacob and i had tech i was kind of live texting you guys this after we gotten home mm -hmm. and i was thinking i was like oh on the podcast i always say i'm a fantasy guy over sci-fi but boy i don't like avatar as much as alita and then in my mind i was like wait avatar is sci-fi it's not fantasy <laughs> avatar is <laughs> like sci-fi like, like, fantasy it, i mean those those genres can blend together yes. a lot because you can say it's yeah it's interesting to see how it does this is the only few where i feel like no it goes away from the dystopia yes it is there but he has yeah. the positivity to be like but the solution is and has always been revert to our roots love. be kind to the earth love yeah. each other and like yes. all these things and you're like yes i do it's a know very... that james cameron you are yeah. right yeah it's a very kind of dystopian movie about the future of humans that's saying that's hopeful in the end and saying we can be better. He's, yeah. he's Navi. Dystopian um, about humans, hopeful about Earth. I like that, Jacob. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, you know, the world of Pandora, to me, aesthetically, it is very interesting because I love, you know, grim, dark stuff as much as the next person. I mm -hmm. like Game of Thrones, obviously. Star Wars can be very grim and just aesthetically very kind of dark. And I think that's cool. But to see something so different from that with Avatar, where it's just full of color, full of life, this whole planet of Pandora, like there's really not too much sci-fi that is even aesthetically like this, right? No, no, yeah. for sure. And and I mean, the human stuff is a little more similar to you know human military future stuff. Like we've seen yeah. that even in Terminator and stuff. But the that I don't know. I just love the design of the Navi. I love the design of all the flora and fauna of Pandora. I think it's so interesting. You know, I love my blue cat people. I don't care what people say. That's it's amazing. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm in it. I'm into for, it. it. For, you know, the history of cinema, it's definitely the most actualized alien world, right? Give them credit yeah. for that. And Colin, you mentioned Alita. And again, we, we know this in the first movie that uh, this will tie into my whale juice theory. Um, so mm. uh, Sully's in like cyberpunk world, you know, like that's the right. future. And yes. again, that's like, hey, Ridley Scott, did you make Alien? Okay. Hey, Ridley Scott, did you make Blade Runner? <laughs> well, I'm doing Avatar. Yeah. It's well, it's a, a whole secret. world that's, again, consumed by capitalism. He's, right. a, he's a military vet who can't afford to get new legs because he doesn't have the money for it. His vet insurance isn't good enough. They can't give him legs. He fought it. for his country. Like, Not in the future. Yeah. Right. So from an Earth perspective, they fucked up their whole planet. It's a very cyberpunk planet where he came from, right? Yes. And then their thing is Earth is dying. We're going to move here again. That's kind of a cyberpunk thing. And rich people and a lot of the cyberpunk media I've been ingesting because I'm, I'm an addict for it now. Rich They're people, stuck. All they want is immortality. They want to that's go right. to space. They want to get off of Earth because it sucks down there and they want to live forever. It's broken. So, and that's why the whale juice is so valuable. And that's why that's I think right. the first people you'll see colonizing will be the wealthy of Earth. They'll be the first Wayland people Utani. arriving at Pantora. Yeah. Yeah. So the rich if people only they realize the evil nation or whatever. Hundred percent. They just yeah. need to be down there living the way of water, baby. A simpler existence. No, I need to That's bring right. capitalism to this planet. And that'll be maybe the conflict of the next one, like the the rich yes. immortals. I think you're through definitely like that. you're definitely on the right track there. And if it seems like That's all 
sci-fi these days is all about how capitalism is ruining the <laughs> earth and <laughs> climate change and everything. It's because it's becoming more and more of a, a reality here on in it's the present. All and, we see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's only continue to get, going to, you know, get worse and worse uh, and more prevalent and it's going to be hard to ignore. So yeah, a lot of dystopian sci-fi is about that. Unless the adults start listening to the Gretas of the world. That's right. right. Nothing's going to change, curious. and it's not. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, that's the bummer. So, All right. Valid movie is valid. I just don't love Pandora, but technical achievement. Check it out. Just that's as fair. A curiosity. I, I I don't hate it. It's fine. Hell I yeah. just don't love Pandora. But I've had a great time talking to you guys, and that's my that's it for me. Colin. It's very yeah. It stimulated a great conversation, mm -hmm. and that's more than you can say about. You know, we can talk about this movie longer than we can talk about. Uh, the new Jurassic World or or whatever, right? Transformers, so, yeah, easy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't seen you post your letterbox yet, Jacob. I was kind of like eagerly waiting to. for that yeah. afterwards because I I really did enjoy your Avatar one review. Um, I'm nervous about where things are going to land for our top tens for 2022 because. Mm. I'm not positive this will make it or things like the Batman and, and, and these big movies that I've really like whittled down or removed off. But then like, nope has stuck with me and mm -hmm. is still up there. And then, but I can, almost can't stop thinking of this film in the same way as nope. So I wonder mm -hmm. if there will be a shifting and if I will return to this, I, I don't know. Hmm. Nope. I, I definitely think nope is a better movie than this movie. And it's it just is not as messy. Yeah. It's, I mean, Jordan Peele is such a yeah. controlled filmmaker. He knows, you know, he just has such a control over the medium that James Cameron, I don't feel like he's a master storyteller in that he's more of a master of the technical aspects of film. And the story is always kind of the weakest point of a lot of his films. Maybe not T2, because that has a great story, but, you know, other, other movies. Um, he's not the Fable Men. You know. Yeah, he's right. not Spielberg. He's not Scorsese. No. Something He's doing his own one. thing, but uh, I don't know. We've, with my top ten, you know, there's a lot of movies I still need to see this year that are kind of the critics' darlings that I haven't seen yet. So I kind of got to wait a little bit. I got to see if Avatar is going to be number one. <laughs> it probably won't but, be number one. I think right now, Nope is my top movie of the year. I'm right and I've been saying, you, uh, you know, I've been worrying about kind of the future of blockbuster movies, you know. But it just in recent years, we've gotten. You know, last year, Dune, I thought that was great, a great blockbuster epic. Mm -hmm. We've got Top Gun Maverick, which I still haven't seen, but I hear it's good. Love. So, yep. uh, we've got Nope this summer, and now we've got The Way of Water. I think there are a lot of gems within the blockbuster kind of landscape in the past Back couple of years. Track. Yeah. And even smaller things like Barbarian. Like, blockbusters seem to be fine, but small movies are doing good, too. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. X, All right. That kind of stuff. This has never happened before. I'm literally 3% away from my laptop dying. We've been talking about this so Incredible. long. So we wow. have to wrap it up here. Yeah. Uh, if you have any other thoughts, let us know. Hit us up at normies underscore like underscore us. Where, of course, you can tell us your uh, name and, and what animal you're bonded with. And, and I see you. What the people of your tribe are doing. We, of course, will see you on the yes. internet. You can see us, if you'd like, at our YouTube channel as well. Uh, like, rate, review, subscribe. That helps us out a ton. And let us know what you think of The Way of Water. We want to hear about that and what your top 10 of the year are as well. That's um, right. And the, the year's coming to a close soon. And yes. I just want to say we've got a little treat for you next week that I think you're going to like. We have a treat a coming break. up and then we're going to take New Year's off, right? So just so our, our listeners are kind of caught up on that, look forward to an episode next week and then happy holidays to everyone. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. And uh, as we alluded to, yes, I see you. And that's what uh, where Sully should have taken his first son after he got shot. That's right. Did you guys think when he plugs into the tree at the end, shouldn't he have been a human? I would have liked the imagery if it was human Jake Sully holding hands with Natiri mm. as they look at their dead kid. I think it's almost like in the but first he one, he discarded his, his human identity by throwing his it's body away. It's just gone. So, so even mentally, of... he is. He gotcha. thinks of himself as a Navi, even though okay. he does things certain things differently, like he uses a gun and has military training and that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I never would. I have a lot of castaway dreams or like ending up on like another planet or something. I, I will never give in to anyone else's culture. You're never going to go <laughs> dances with wolves? Or, never. Uh... <laughs> wow. 
All right. Oh. We have been your hosts. This is uh, Spider Colin. No, I'm Spider Mike. And this is uh, <laughs> Spider Jacob. Spider Jake Sully. <laughs> yeah, Spider Jake Sully. Jake Sully. Jake. Spiders stick Jake. together. <laughs> Spiders stick, stick together. together. Oh, I love that. Bye. Throwing my dreadlocks out as we speak. Mm-hmm. Bye. Faster when I'm blue. <laughs>